CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the town of Arlington. Excuse me, we're getting started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the town of Arlington uh, Redevelopment Board. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order. It's October 21st, 2024. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the Redevelopment Board. The other members of the committee, please introduce yourselves. Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. <laughs> Ken Lau. And um, we are without our uh, member, Shana, um, this evening, uh, who is out sick. And we uh, also have joining us the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ritter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move right into our agenda. We do have a packed agenda this evening. Um, we will be sticking to the times as published in the hearing this evening, which may mean that we may limit public comment on several of the hearings, depending on uh, the discussions with the applicants. Uh, the first uh, item on the agenda this evening is the review of our meeting minutes. <coughs> uh, and I will first start with the meeting minutes from the uh, joint meeting between the Redevelopment Board and the Select Board on September 16, 2024. And I'll run through to see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Steve. No changes, Madam Chair. Jean? No changes. Ken? Yeah, I do have one change. Okay. Uh, from the joint meeting? Yes. There was, um, uh, it, there was a quote saying that I uh, was against um, creating a uh, overlay uh, district for um, affordable housing. And, uh, and I, I said the reason why I, I'm against that is I did not want to uh, localize all the affordable housing into one area. I'd rather have uh, affordable housing diverse throughout the town. So it's not uh, just in one, in one pocket. I don't think what they said there is. How would you like to edit it? I'm trying to find it right now. It's on page um, four, um, the third paragraph under agenda item number four. Uh, maybe at the end, it says affordable housing should be built uh, anywhere in town where it's left, where, it, where it's feasible. I don't think that's the word I want to use, feasible. I think it should be more the, where it's uh, the, more diverse, so there's more integration between affordable housing and uh, ma uh, market rate housing, because uh, there should be no just uh, where it is. Where, uh, so uh, affordable housing should be built anywhere, in, or affordable housing should be built um, so it is distributed throughout the town. Yes. Is that more appropriate? Yeah, we're more diverse, and you know, so it's not you don't you don't create a a depressed area in town where it's all affordable housing. No, I I understand. We just have to get clear the specific wording. So, would you be fine with affordable housing should be built um, so that it is distributed throughout the town? Would that be yes, as long appropriate? As it, yeah, as long as you cross out the word where it's feasible. I don't think that's the, right. that was not my meeting. Okay. Are there any um, concerns? or objections to Ken's proposed modification? No. Nope. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes <clears throat> from Monday, September 16th, as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. We'll now move to the meeting minutes from October 7th, 2024. Let's open those. Can I get this to open? So, uh, Steve, do you have any additions or corrections? No changes. Gene? No changes. Ken? No changes. And I don't either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 7th, 2024, as submitted? So motion. Second. Take a vote, starting with Steve? Yes. Gene? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. 
All right, back to our uh, agenda. We will now move to our first public hearing, docket number 3348 for 821 to 837 Massachusetts Avenue. We will note that we are reopening this special permit um, originally from 2009 as amended in 2019 for the sole purpose of, uh, of amending um, let me pull that. Condition number five. Pull that up and I will read that. We will, uh, special condition number five, which reads as follows The Atwood House shall remain at its present location on the site, and reasonable and diligent efforts shall be used to maintain its present condition to prevent any damage from the elements or otherwise until it is redeveloped. It is acknowledged that 10 parking spaces behind the Atwood House are reserved for its use. It is further acknowledged that the plan of the site leaves space behind the Atwood House to accommodate a possible future expansion of the structure and that no use of that portion of the site will preclude such an expansion. Redevelopment of the house will require an amendment of the special permit regardless of whether the proposed use of the structure is allowed by right or by special permit as such are listed in the Arlington Zoning Bylaw. No request to move or demolish the house by amending this permit will be made within 24 months of the date of the issuance of this permit as of the date in 2009, which has well passed. Um, so I will just put forth to the board this evening that um, I would recommend that we um, move that the board's decision regarding docket number 3348 issued on or about April 13th, 2009 as an end as amended by the board's decision on or about November 4th, 2019 be further amended by modifying special condition number five as set forth in the 2009 decision, which allows us, which allows the board's consideration for docket number 3798. So that's the motion that I would uh, propose that we undertake this evening. Um, let's see if there is any discussion. Claire, did you have anything to add to that before we? Nothing to forward? add. Thank you. Okay. That's right. Ken? No. Steve? Nothing here. Jean? I can't support the motion as it was just stated because it removes a very important provision of the permit without our deciding what to do with the upcoming new permit for the facility. I would suggest instead, um, where it starts with be further amended, be further amended by modifying special condition number five as set forth in the 2009 decision so that it is consistent with the board decision in docket number 3798. And I would further suggest that we not modify this permit until we decide what to do with the other permit. We may not approve the other permit tonight, in which case I think this provision needs to remain in the earlier permit. I believe that the motion as originally read allows for the consideration of the docket and does not hem us in as the revised wording does to the results of the um, special but, permit, but it allows us to open it. What it does, it is, it allows us to move our consideration to docket number three seven nine eight, and this is the text as was reviewed with town council. I know, and I emailed town council and told them I couldn't agree with the text. Yeah, because what we're doing is we're getting rid of a very important condition in that 2009 permit. And if we don't do anything with the next permit tonight, yep. which we may not do because we need four votes Correct. for it, we would have amended that permit by taking out a very important condition about the Atwood House and not have anything to replace it. I, again, I spoke on the phone with town council and I believe again that this allows us to review and consider the docket we do not need to close this permit this evening. If we need to further amend it, we can do so. If we do not come to a decision this evening, thereby leaving both dockets open, but this allows us to then move to the consideration of the docket, and to your point, we can further amend it if we need to at a later date before the um, original special permit is re-closed. 
Uh, we're just opening it. We're not modifying it. No, no. The, uh, the chair's motion would modify it by removing the section about the Atwood House. No, it no. does not. No, I am not removing it. I'm amending it to identify. I'm modifying number five to allow consideration of docket number 3798. I'm not removing it anything. It doesn't say how it's modifying the condition. It just says modifying the condition. It has to say how we're modifying the condition. I can't vote for something that just says we're modifying the condition and not say how we're modifying the condition. Steve. So may I propose that I'll, you know, we may do, we can treat this as a friendly motion, but sure. that we reopen docket uh, 3348 to consider modifications to condition five. Just reopening it. Sure. No, no implication to what changing it. We can close it without changing it. That's fine. If we can certainly open it this evening, and um, what we will need to do um, is come back to this to close this item this evening if we get to the point where we need to um, right. where we need to modify the item. But again. Um, I'm comfortable with Mr. Revelak's suggestion. Okay. So uh, is there a vote, is there a motion to reopen docket number 3348 issued on April 13th, 2009 and amended by the board's decision on no November 4th, 2019? So moved. Second. Take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I may yes as well. So we will hold on any um, amendment language uh, until after we move to the next docket number. So at this time, we will leave that hearing open and we will move to too many screens open. <clears throat> Public hearing for docket number 3798, 821 Massachusetts <clears throat> Avenue, which is continued from July 1st, 2024. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Director Ricker. Great, thank you. So um, this is a continuance of a hearing from July. Um, the board asked for um, several items of additional materials that have been um, provided by the applicant, including a drainage calculation report, fire department memo, study of a solar array, array um, a lead checklist, shade report, tree, the tree evaluation letter, an updated application for the EDR special permit, updated architectural drawings, and a SketchUp model and video. Um, so those items were provided to the department, which was provided to the board, and um, <coughs> that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Director Rickard. Um, so at this point, what I'd like to do is um, turn the um, turn the floor over to the applicant. Um, I will note that the applicant will have up to 10 minutes to update the board on the revised materials as submitted. Um, after that, the board will um, uh, ask any qualifying questions. Uh, we will limit discussion then until after um, public comment. We'll then move back and uh, deliberate, decide whether or not a vote can be taken this evening. Um, I will note that unfortunately we are um, down one, one board member and this does require a four, um, four votes in the affirmative in order to approve this this evening. So I just want to be clear on that before you get started. Sure. Okay. If you can Thank please you, introduce you. yourself for the record, I'd Mary appreciate it. Stanley O'Connor for the applicant. Good evening, I'm the <coughs> board director Ricker. Before I turn it over to Mr. Rojas, I want to give the answers to the questions that um, Jean had raised, Mr. Benson had raised at the last hearing. The CBS leases are proprietary and I cannot provide lease to you. Uh, but I did review the section. Uh, one of the things you wanted to know is what specifically is excluded that uh, 821 cannot uh, put in there by way of retail. And I can tell you it's uh, pretty much what CBS sells. Um, uh, health and beauty aids, reading cards, no gift store, no one hour photo photography, uh, no vitamin store, no pharmacy, mail order or there, or doctors who prescribe drug, ph pharmaceuticals, and no dollar store. 
um, those are the things that are specifically excluded because the property is next door. Um, with respect to the question <laughs> as to the use of the um, drive-through, because they're going to use what's we'll call the CVS um, in and out uh, entryway, there is no exclusive right for CVS to use that. The lease provides for both the 821 applicants and um, the CVS to use that uh, existing curb cut. And then finally, I was asked to inquire of area, an area realtor as to um, whether there is a market for office space in the town of Arlington. The realtors will remain nameless, um, but they did say, no, there is not. Um, that they said that there is, they sent, some of them sent me a number of the listings um, that are in Arlington presently, um, that uh, the pandemic has changed the landscape for rental of uh, office space in town, that it was primarily rented by doctors, CPAs, and lawyers. We're not seeing that. Uh, my also uh, opinion is that the uh, office space rent in this town is quite expensive, $35 to $40 a square foot, which is comparable to downtown Boston rates. My client, I have discussed that with him, so he is changing his shift to a retail use. Um, and he's going to use area realtors uh, for a retail use for that space. So those were the questions. I, I turn it over to Mr. Rohan so can update you on his followers. Great, thank you very much. You. Hi. Um, I think what I'd like to do is... I'm so sorry, could you please just, for the record, state your, oh, your whole name? Thank Andres you. Andres Rojas, Principal of Rojas Design thank you. of Boston. We're architects, landscape architects. Um, I go through a list of what I wrote down last time that I was asked for and try to respond. Thank you. Um, lighting plan, <clears throat> you may have seen we included a photogrammetric plan that shows uh, the lighting selections, the lighting locations. Uh, we feel very comfortable that that could work well, and uh, we've submitted it for your review. Lead checklist, uh, we submitted a lead checklist. We hired a lead consultant specifically for it, and um, it meets the silver standards. It, uh, the silver standard is uh, up to 50, and we're at about 58. So uh, we're in good shape in terms of that, uh, and it's included in the package. Stormwater management. We've hired uh, Gala Simon Associates to create a drainage plan. It's included in the drawings, the drawing package. Uh, you can see how stormwater is being managed, underground retention and infiltration system. Uh, so it's included. Uh, please review it, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer. I was asked for a rendering. I think I, our drawing package now shows a couple of different rendered views of it, uh, of the project. Uh, materials board. I'll get back to the materials board. Uh, I'll show you it. I, uh, I included a sheet. I think it's sheet. If you keep going, Claire, there's a sheet that says what the materials are. That one. But I now I'll show you in a minute uh, the actual physical materials board. Um, elevations and photographs of existing structures. I think we've shown that. We sent you a package of existing photographs, and we also did a, a site plan and elevation along the entire frontage on on Mass Ave. Shadow study. Uh, a couple of our sheets show the shadow study for both a three-story building <clears throat> and a five-story building. Uh, if you keep going back, back, yeah. There. Um, it shows the effects of shadows from a five-story and a three-story building. We, that's a five-story building. If you go back one more sheet, it's the proposed three-story building significantly less shadow on the church parking lot uh, most of the time and we were that's one of the reasons we kept it at three stories um, precise footage of how far the proposed structure is from the church if you go back claire to that drawing right there that one? no that one you can see that there are dimension lines you just it's hard to read from here but there are three dimensions shown uh, from the various points of our building to the various points of the church. Um, 
solar assessment and plan. We began working with Great Sky Solar of Arlington. Uh, they evaluated the site. We've uh, inc incorporated uh, photovoltaic panels on the roof uh, for 50% of the roof area. Uh, the owner's committed to do it. Uh, we've also talked to them about potentially, and we'll, we'll see where we're come down, uh, covering some of the parking with trellis and putting panels on that as well. <coughs> um, we've also included in that in uh, one of the site plans that we're providing an electric vehicle charging station. We reviewed the proposed plan. Uh, that one, we'll go back clear to that one. Thank you. We reviewed the proposed plan uh, with the fire department, with uh, Deputy Chief Ryan Mellie. And you can see in the left-hand corner near the entry driveway, up further up, there's a tr fire truck shown. And the length, that long bar there in the driveway, um, it was to convince and to, you know, uh, the fire department that in fact the ladder truck could make the turn. And we have a letter presented to you in the package saying he has no problem with what we're doing and that it seems to meet the fire department's needs. The other thing that this drawing shows is if you look on the full frontage on Mass Ave, we've now put new street trees where we can, within reason, every 25 feet on the street frontage. Uh, the owner has agreed to that. Uh, and on the bottom you see the elevations of CVS and kind of the outline of the church on the other side. But just to give you relative height comparison. Massive. Um, photographs of existing. I sent you a zip file uh, with many photographs of existing conditions. The Austrian pine. It's actually an Austrian pine. We had Dan Hager from Hartney Graymont, a uh, respected, certified arborist in this area, many years experience, go out to the site with us and look at the tree. And I sent you a letter with his evaluation. He thinks that there are insect problems, that it's got a fungal infection, that it's been badly pruned, it's misshapen. He doesn't really see great value in the tree. He doesn't deem it a specimen tree. And I'm a landscape architect. If it were a specimen, we've preserved old growth specimen trees and worked around them when they're valuable. This one, in our opinion, is not, and neither in Mr. Hager's opinion. We feel that it's more important that the building meet the street frontage on Mass Ave to continue the whole notion of urban design in that area uh, than to keep this misshapen tree that really has been doesn't have long life expectancy, and second of all, already has a series of problems. Um, so, for what it's worth, we set you the letter. Um, we have not done a mechanical plan. Uh, we do know that we're going to use solar we, uh, for the power for some of the electric. We will submit a, a mechanical plan. We do show the condensing units on the site plan. If you go back to Claire, maybe, maybe, maybe more, there. Well, actually, no, the, the, there. On either side of the building, you can see these little boxes, one on the left and one on the right side of the building. The, those condensers, can you point to them? Yes, those and those are our condensers for the uh, heat pumps that we expect will be the, 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 the heating system and cooling system of choice. They're there for both the uh, retail units and the residential units. Um, we're happy to update once we have a full mechanical plan. Obviously, we, uh, the owner has not hired a mechanical engineer yet to figure this out or uh, a full electrical engineering, but we will and we're happy to provide that at the right time. Um, the venting, we have shown on the roof plan where we see venting mostly from restrooms and toilets coming up through the roof. Um, you, you can identify them on the roof plan and um, hope I can answer any questions. We have shown a trash area. If you go to the rendered site plan, clear the color one right there. Uh, in the upper right, of the 10 spaces, which are now nine spaces, 
That upper right box up there is a trash enclosure. We've also drawn a little blow up of it. Uh, I think the next sheet, Claire. No, keep going. Okay. There is a trash enclosure shown somewhere. Maybe not. No, maybe there. I'm oh, sorry, go back. No. All right. There, um, there is. It's on L6. Is it L6? L06. L06. In the top right. Well, it's, yeah, it's shown in plan, but I thought we had done an enlargement of it. But basically, it's for recycling and trash. It's an enclosure, and it will be screened with a fence for the apartments as well as the retail tenants. And you can see that it's in proximity to CVS's trash and recycling enclosure, which is the larger rectangle just slightly to the left and north of it, off the parking lot there. So it seemed like the right place to do it. We have repaired, we have uh, illustrated that we want to repair the fence between the church, those existing trees on the right hand side. There's a chain link fence behind them. And there was an issue where they said, you know, the fence was in disrepair. Our plans now show that that's a new fence. So that's another request that we did. Um, we, we show the type of railings uh, for the balconies. Uh, there is no railing on the roof, as we talked about. It's, the roof has a high parapet, high enough to be a guard. And I also submitted uh, an eight and a half by 11 parapet detail because there was a question about the slope on that parapet. And it slopes inward. And clearly, we don't want anybody resting anything on there that might fall. Um, the issue of removing the four rear parking spaces, the owner feels that those are important for not only the apartments, but also for the staff in retail. And uh, you know, he's limited to those 10 spaces, which are now nine when you take away the trash enclosure space. And um, he just you know, doesn't want them parking. He can't allow them to park in CVS lot and he's afraid of spillover. So he wants to retain those park, those four parking spaces. If um, I could ask you just to start. Excuse me? If I could ask you to start circling towards the. I, I will. There's complete. only a few left. Perfect. Thank you very much. Points. I appreciate that. Uh, I mentioned the EV charging station, the electric vehicle. It's in the vertical spaces over there, so, you know, shown. Uh, the street trees we talked about, we included indoor bicycle storage. There's a little room if you go back, Claire, a little bit to the floor plans, like first floor plan, like maybe that one. Keep going, that one. There's a room inside the building. I'm happy to point to it because it's hard to describe. That's a bunch of trash and gold too. Right here. That's a, and we uh, are including bicycle racks that are secure and locked. Uh, for indoor bicycle storage as well as we have outdoor racks. You can see that circular ribbon kind of rack. Uh, there's several of them on the outside as well. We've met the bicycle storage requirement based on our zoning review. And we've given you an updated, Roper survey did an updated dimensional sheet that shows the the FAR, the lock coverage, and everything for the entire site. Uh, for including the new property, the new building, and the CVS site. Uh, and we're, you know, we believe we're well within the margins of the requirements there. Um, and Mr. Lau requested that we look at relocating the front staircase, and we did look at it, but we felt that it wasn't going to work. And the reason is, if every time we push that staircase to one side, as opposed to in the center, if we pushed it to one side, on the upper floors and the apartment floors, it took away the highest value space from those apartments. Because if you look at the floor layouts, the way the floor plans are, those front corners in the apartment plans are living space. And if you put the staircase there, it really constricts it for one of the apartments. So we left it in the middle. Also, the owner feels that, <clears throat> that it, it likely will be two smaller tenants, uh, but it still works fine for one larger tenant. 
In terms of signage, um, exterior signage, we don't know yet. It would be very different if it's one tenant, if it's two tenants, if it happens to be an office tenant or a retail tenant. So we will submit future signage drawings, we're happy to, uh, and would offer that that should be a condition of any decision. Uh, other than that, I'm here to answer questions. Great, thank you very much. And I'll, I'll show you the materials. Great, thank you. It's a little delicate just because the no, pieces. No, that's no on problem. It, we can the we can um, the pieces on it are heavy. Put here, put it right here in Shane's spot here. Okay. Well, what it shows is the, this is the. Can we go to the color rendering? Yeah, that's good enough. The the vertical fins that are shown brown are with these insulated panels. Th this is just decking material. The beige siding material is shown here. It's a different texture than the dark material, which is are the ribbon bands and kind of fins that stick out on the side. That's uh, also a ceramic. A, 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 Leg uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a ceramic a cement panel, fiber cement. This silver uh, panel is for the canopies over the entrances. If you can go back clear to the front, go back, keep going, keep going to the very front cover. There at the entrance, you can, that right there, there and also on the side entries. It, that, that would be the component. And then the storefronts for the front end, anywhere there's storefront windows, there would be a, a this would be the, the finish. And then the railings um, for the balconies are in this finish. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, the, the, the specific pro uh, products are listed here. You could, check them out and, and I'll have you. Can I just ask you one question yes. specifically around the um, fiber cement panels? Yeah. Yeah. In the rendering, these are shown as panelized systems, but I believe in the elevations, these are shown as um, as uh, clap, clapboard. Can you flip forward? It's, it's a panel system. So and these are these are there's no dimensionality to these. These are you have two different no, widths. Uh, the panels can if you look at the lighter panel, obviously that with the grid, that's a panelized system. The other one is just a different texture for the same panel. They they are panelized, all of it. It's not clabber. Okay, that answers my question. Okay. Thank you. And also all the joints on all these products can come to a, an, an edge, a, a mitered edge. They don't need any trim on the outside. To, it, it'll be flush like that, mitered okay. edges. Thank you very much. Um, we'll start, Steve, with any questions you might have for the applicant. Um, first, uh, <coughs> I realize we gave you quite the list of stuff, and um, I, I appreciate you providing all of it. Okay. Um, quick, quick question. Um, so the the current building has a gas hookup? I believe it does. Okay, but this will be an all-electric building? Yes. Okay, and you're providing something like 64 panels on the roof? Yeah, I, I, the Great Sky Solar planned it out. I believe it's 64 panels and it covers 50% of the roof. Okay, um, now in terms of the bicycle parking, so the the one I saw the room off to the east side with uh, six spaces. Yes. And that that's it for in, indoor. Yes. Okay. And the outdoor was there were a few. Three of those ring racks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, think that, I think that does it for me. Thank you. Um, Jean, any questions? I have just a couple of questions. Yeah, thank you for all the extra materials that you provided. Um, one of the environmental design review standards, and I'm paraphrasing in part, says proposed development shall be related harmoniously to the use scale and architecture of existing buildings in the vicinity that, that have functional or visual relationship to the proposed buildings. 
And I'm having a hard time understanding how this building, as it's proposed, relates well to either the CVS building or to the church building. Yeah. I'm not complaining about a lot about how the building looks, but I don't see it relating harmoniously with either of the two <coughs> buildings on the side. And I'd like you to respond to well, how you we, think it does. I didn't think it was appropriate, uh, I should say we as a firm, didn't think it was appropriate to have it look like the CBS one. So well, we'll start from there. I mean, harmonious is one thing, but uh, we didn't think that doing a new mixed use building you know, and, and adopting the CVS building aesthetic was a reasonable thing to do. We tried to balance in terms of massing size and location between the CVS building and the church. Obviously, we can't really do much to mimic the church architecture. Um, so you're right. In a way, this building is, you know, different than both. But I don't see how it can be. Okay, um, I think that's a fair answer. Um, for the for the lease, I didn't ask for the whole lease. I just asked for three excerpts from the lease. I can't. I can't give you anything. I'd like what I would like, and if my colleagues disagree, we won't get it. I'd like something in writing from you, not simply your that's oral fine. I'll give it to recitation you. Yeah, that's fine. about you know, what's not allowed mm -hmm. in the site. Um, I, you show the leasehold mm -hmm. lines, but just something that says that, you know, the people who would be occupying the building, visitors, have full right to drive and walk through the CVS area. I can give you that. Um, I haven't been, I go to that CVS a lot, mm -hmm. but I tend not to go there at night. Um, is there adequate lighting at night? So like if, if I'm walking in at back? In the back? Oh yeah, it's, it's lit up in the back. If you use the drive-through, you'd see that it's lit up. And there's an existing lamp that was, light, street light that was put in mm -hmm. right near those nine parking spaces that's still there, we're keeping it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll have some other things to say. What, the other thing is, the this board that separates the um, <clears throat> the balconies in front. How did you choose this color? It seems like there's nothing else on that building or on the buildings on either side that relates to these two boards that go up and down along the front of yeah, the Yeah, we really felt that they were an accent to, you know, as opposed to everything being monochromatic. Uh, we wanted an accent. That material, we've used it successfully before. It's also being used in the soffits under the balconies. So, I mean, on top. So the soffit of the ceiling mm -hmm. above the balconies is the same material. Um, and we think it'll look well. I mean, it's not, in all truth be told, that sample is not the color that we wanted. I mean, these don't come out. If not, I would have taken it out. But that's the actual color. That one's a little redder and brighter. That's the actual color that we're suggesting. It's dark. It's called dark acacia. Okay, thank you. But you know they always pick these great names. I'll leave it there for now. Okay, those are the questions. Great, thank you, Gene. Ken. Um, well, thank you for getting all the information back to us. Um, we did ask quite a bit, and I did send a few all the extra questions sure. afterwards. Um, but I, I'm in the same uh, thought as um, Gene. And I'm not going to be as easy as Gene and say, I accept your answer. This building's not contextual at all. It's, it can be stuck anywhere. It doesn't even pay any homage to the church or to the CBS. I'm not saying you have to match materials or use the same 
issues, but you at least carry some of the uh, lines across or carry the same scale across. Uh, you know, there's, there's a certain rhythm and scale to the CVS. So it's actually quite nice along the front there. You could have carried that along on retail. That's why I was trying to give you the opportunity to do that by relocating the entrance. If you look at the church side, uh, you mentioned the scale, you can't emulate that. Well, you got those big windows that form, uh, this, this, the church has two walls that forms a courtyard, and this building is the third that forms this courtyard there. You have these little, um, I don't know, you call those sevens or whatever you call those dark, dark colored trim pieces. That could have been the same scale or something along the line that mimics uh, the big wind church window openings. There's, there's some sort of interplay that could have happened. And right now, this thing just sort of sits there when I see it, and it sticks out. Um, I, I don't know. I, I was trying to be less blunt last time when I say, look, can we get this more contextually in this area here? Because it is, it's right next to the new high school. It's right downtown. Everybody goes by this area. Um, I don't mind modern buildings. I like modern buildings. But you don't have to, uh, you can keep it modern, but at least have it more contextual so it sort of blends in with, or homage to each side of it, or what's across from it, and get a rhythm going, or some sort of understanding. Right now, I can't see anything that relates to anything around that area. I mean, if you say, okay, this is maybe two blocks down, uh, that we're mimicking some sort of, uh, uh, some of the architecture, I say, okay. but. Uh, that's why I asked for the elevation, and you did give it to me, thank you. But it's still uh, not there. Um, so, sorry if I'm a little too. No, okay. Hey. And also, uh, one of my list of questions I asked for was the height of the trellis. I asked for a section of the trellis. The reason I asked for that is you're going to put solar panels on top of the trellis. Right, so that's where all the wires run, okay, and uh, that's that's going to be all DC high voltage, okay. So you don't want someone touching it that's using it below. Right. So that's going to be a certain height. So we responded to that, and we did respond to that on the height, and also you did. Yeah, Great Sky Solar said that the way those panels are installed, there is no exposed wiring. If we put a, a panel between the solar panel and the actual trellis. There's nothing that can be reached below. Now, there will be obviously a feed that comes down and we're gonna have to protect the box that, that feed go, those feeds go to from any tampering, from child or whoever. That's different. But in terms of actual, you know, accessing the panel vertically underneath, Gray Sky Solar says the insulation will not allow for it. Uh, yes. The reason I'm asking is this. I don't want the trellis to be a certain height when we approve it, and then you come back and tell me we're putting solar panels up there based on our direction, and now these trellis have to be higher. And that's not what we approved. So that's why I just want to see what the height of that trellis is in relative terms of when you walk, in the, walk down the street, what do you see up there? It's all, it goes back to the proportion of what that is up there, okay? You've got a little hat up there with a little, uh, trellis and solar panels up there. I just want to see what that portion is the rest of the building. Yeah, I, well, I think our elevations show that, but I'm happy to give you more data. Um, I think I'm going to stop right there because I, I know Richard's going to say a few things, so I'm not going to. Great. Thank you, Ken. Um, so I just had a couple of items. I'll build on what both Ken and, and Jean were saying. Can you please go to A05? Um, I think my biggest challenge, I have several challenges with the facade. I don't mind that we're introducing a wooden rain screen element. I think the point that, I think it was Gene made around why that's just there in the front. If, for example, that um, appeared again on the side where we have, you know, the uh, the entrance there on this, you know, again, if there was some sort of rhythm where that marked something, whether it's the entrances or, um, you know, that 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 is a, a repeating element, um, I could understand that a little bit more. My biggest concern is the prominence of this facade as you're driving down Mass Ave. This is set forward 
purposefully from the church, given that this is a mixed-use building to, to that will um, that will. Um, that has a different relationship, much like CVS, with the street. And this is just a complete blank facade with these two eyebrow elements. I would, again, if you look at the rhythm of the CVS building and the church next door, there are a lot of long horizontal elements, which I think you could integrate into this facade, which would both tie this to the other buildings as well as break up this blank facade by whether it's you know pulling the lines from the balcony around um, you know if um, you know that's one item I'm, I'm still struggling with trying to read this flat elevation against or this flat rendering versus the articulation that's being shown in the elevation the, the the elevations because it does look like clapboard to me which I think would be more appropriate than this um, but seem panelized system um, and I think you could modernize that again with some of these horizontal elements potentially that you're that you're pulling through I would just like you to study it because I can't get behind this facade is what we're seeing when we're driving down Mass, Mass Ave. Okay. okay. Well, one of the reasons, just of, if you look at the front elevation there, why those vertical fins, the ones that are mm -hmm. brown in color, are where they are, is really to focus those balconies toward that side of Mass Ave. It really is to focus toward the church and toward south on Mass Ave. Um, and those that are was probably one of the reasons, and also obviously to create an accent on the front facade. Those are the least of my problems. It's 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 the the, the side facade, the you know the um, the texture. Yeah, that one, yeah. Um, this is very different than the rendering. And again, I'm, when we're missing the horizontal elements, we're also, it's very flat because there's, there's no trim around the windows. I want to see some dimension there. I, I think that we, it, it's, it's currently very flat and we would be remiss if we didn't have some sort of a, a dimensional element around those windows. You do have a much more modern front facade. Um, but I'm just really struggling with the flat punched openings. And I know that you had said that you would look at the signage once you had a retail tenant, but you need to give them a place to put it. So you need a sign band. And the um, transom window that you have above, um, if you go to the, store, the um, Mass Ave facade, yeah. yeah. You know whether it's reducing the transom window to give them a strong sign band, whether you um, you know they they need some way to mark their their entry. And right now these fully recede. There's there's no location. It's just gla glass. There's nowhere for them to put a sign. Now that this is retail, we need to think about that. Yes, and and that's okay. It sounds like that's changed. And we. We're inclined, depending on the type of tenant, on on glass signage as well as blade signs. That's kind of what we were aimed toward, but we haven't come up with a design. So on glass signage is is very hard to do well because you need a raceway, and we do not allow cabinet signs in Arlington. So I, I just ask you to please take a look at that again. I will. And um, that's a good comment. Great. We'll look at it. Thank you very much. Um, so we talked about the windows, we talked about uh, signage. What's that? Okay, sure. Um, you know, the other thing I want to talk a little bit about, and you know, then we'll go to back to Ken, is the fencing. So um, I would not like to see chain link fence in this location. Um, we, you mentioned that it would be chain link around the um, trash enclosure and along the, the side if we are going to, again, have this new modern building 
you know, looking at a, a wood fence or um, some other durable fence, but cha chain link, um, I, I don't think is is appropriate. Well, no, the, the trash enclosure is is wood fence enclosed. Okay, it said chain link in the in the drawings because I I just looked well, at no, it. No, there's a chain link fence in the back. There's a chain link fence on the back on on this property line right here. This is the new, that's the new chain link fence that was requested because behind these existing trees, it's kind of falling down. The trash enclosure shows an actual wall. It's, it's a fenced track with wood fencing. Okay, Shadow so that one is wood. fencing that would totally screen that. Right. It was intended to And again, that if we are replacing this fence here, I would not like to see that as chain link. Okay. So it's something I would like to be considered. Yeah. And you're going to need to screen if your condensing units are that close to Mass Ave. You're going to need to screen those either with landscaping. We show it on the landscape plan um, right there. You could also see it on the color, on the rendered site. I thought I just looked Keep at the landscape right plan. Let me take a look. We've screened around those condensers, and we will. In the final landscape plan, we will screen around the condensers. If they Obviously, it's not important. Um, oh, the other thing is you have a little bit of landscaping there. I mean, I, I'd like to see a screen around the condensing units. And we did show the walkway on the left side of the building between it and CVS. Perfect. Thank so, you. Yeah. That's great. Um, and one other item. I think that was it. Ken? Um, well, I was going to touch base on what you already said. Um, you have uh, cooling, uh, cooling units on the left side of the building is fine, but the cooling units on the right side, that's where the walkway is to get into the unit. Also, that's where the kids play in, in the playground area there. I would like to see if you put that up on the roof. Because uh, I'm the, sorry, which side? The right, the east oh, side. Oh, the ones near the church. Get rid of those. Well, not get rid of them. Just put them on yeah, the. Yeah, no, put them somewhere. Else. Yes, yeah. it's just a, not a good spot to put it because that's where all the kids play. That's where all the, uh, you know, that's where they play. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, well, it, it's, that. it's not the sight; it's the sound. Okay, we can all do right. that. Great. Um, any other um, initial questions, comments, before we move to public comment? Gene. I have some comments, not questions. Let, let's go ahead and, and, and take those now. First, yes, thank you very much for realizing that uh, office wouldn't work there, and you're going to have to do retail, <clears throat> some other sort of. Office may work if it's a very reasonable rate. <laughs> <laughs> like free. <laughs> um, so that, um, and, um, I think pulling the building up where you have on Mass Ave is the right thing to do, and it's certainly consistent with the, um, the town's environmental design guidelines for commercial property, which are referenced in the Section 3.4.4 EDR standards, which actually specifically say in part, in areas with lots of commercial activity, it's important to maintain a continuous street wall with modest or few building setbacks, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what you're proposing there is certainly fine. My, my concern is the buffer that's supposed to be 15 feet between this building and the lot line of the church. And there are if, and I had a hard time reading the drawings, but I got some help. Um, there's, there's many parts of this building that are less than 15 feet from the church lot line. And um, I don't, th I mean, my, you know, I'll hear what my colleagues have to say on this, but I'm not inclined to think that's something that we can do away with unless the church came in and said we're comfortable with this as proposed, then I would be more comfortable, but absent the church saying it. Now, that doesn't mean I think this 15-foot buffer, when it's not a residence, <coughs> store, makes a lot of sense, but we're living with 
whoever wrote the zoning bylaw somewhere in the distant past says about the 15 foot buffer. So I think that's my other, that's my other main concern. Even though the side yard setback for the district is zero? It, but, but that's separate from if you have a, a building in the B district next to a building in the R district. So there's this interesting part of the zoning bylaw that basically says screening and buffering shall be required in any industrial or business district that abut certain visible residential lots and the minimum width of the buffer shall be as follows. So in the, which district is this before? Before, um, 15 foot minimum buffer abutting in our district, R0 through R5. I'm not saying that's smart, but I'm saying the that's in the R district. Yes, it yes, is it is. R1 district. So that, that's my other concern. So I just put that out there. I appreciate that, Steve. You, so I there's, and uh, well, there is that table, and if you, the paragraph below it contains language including, which includes the word, the phrase, however, provisions of this section referring to the buffer requirements shall not supersede the minimum setbacks for parking lots per section 6.1 or the minimum yard requirements for the district. So to me, if the you know the buffer, if the the buffers do not supersede the minimum yard requirements, so the minimum yard requirements trump trump the buffers. And in this case, the minimum yard requirement is zero. So I read it as you know the minimum buffer requirement is the you know the lesser of 15 feet or the mid, or the or the yard requirement. In which case, it would be zero. I read it exactly the opposite way. <laughs> the way I read it is it shall not supersede the minimum setbacks, which means you do whichever one is greater. So if you had a 25-foot setback requirement, for example, or a 20-foot setback requirement, this could not supersede that minimum setback. But it doesn't say this takes the place of the minimum setback. So I don't. But you can't have a. You, the, the, you're saying the 15 foot set. Or else this buffer. would make. Or else this would make no sense as you're reading it, because there are no side yard setbacks for a lot of the business districts. So you're reading in a way that would make no sense. Where the way I'm reading it makes a lot of sense. You choose whichever one is larger. <laughs> I, um, I read the same way Steve did. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's, uh, you know what is a very poorly written provision. There's yes, no right. doubt we, we read it that way as well. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and I, I would agree. I think um, the nor the, um, the, the nor supersede, I, I read the same way that, that Steve does. I read it as precedence. Well. Yeah. Yeah, what takes precedence. But one out of one's not bad with Gene. Well, I mean, when they come back, when it comes to have a vote, first we'll vote on who's right or whose idea makes more sense and get that out of the way and then we can vote on that. Well, I, I think, again, it, it's, um, without Shana here, it's um, a challenge, but I think we should give them a sense of whether or not that seems like something they need to address or not because that's a, pretty big shift one way or or the other. Um, and I can't speak for Shana, mm -hmm. but um, you know, three of the four board members this evening do not have, um, are, are reading this in the same way that you have interpreted the. Um, and, and we even discussed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, if every, I'm not going to vote no simply because of that. Okay. But I just want them to be clear on whether it's something we need them to explore or, or not. Um, Jean, did you have other items you wanted to address? Okay. Um, so with that, let me just do a quick time check here. 
Let's see. So I think what I'm going to do right now is to open, um, I'll open public comment. We're going to need to limit public comment to no more than 20 minutes. We're already at the start time for the next public hearing. Um, and uh, it definitely sounds like we have some, some work to do to come back. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll take public comment and then we'll run through what, um, what we need to address in the future. Um, and what we'll do is we will also vote to continue um, both dockets. Um, Jean, as, as you suggested, that we uh, opened this, this evening if the board feels that that's the um, appropriate next step. Okay, um, so with that, I will open um, uh, public comment for uh, docket number 3798, 821 Massachusetts Avenue. So anyone who wishes to speak this evening, if you could raise your hand, um, I'll call on you and you'll have up to uh, three minutes to address the board. I'll ask you to please uh, introduce yourself with your first, last name, and address. And if I get asked that you also, please spell your last name so that um, we are able to capture that for the record. I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, anyone wishing to speak this evening? Please. Uh, Asha Kepka, I am from Precinct 1, my <coughs> last name is Kepka, K-E-P-K-A, um, 17 South Street. Um, I came here um, because I'm alarmed about uh, some of the tree pattern you were losing, and specifically, specifically this tree. Um, I looked at the report, and the report states this tree is a little stressed, and I think based on the current summer we have, all the trees in our town are stressed. There, there isn't a tree that's not stressed and showing the signs of stress. I'm concerned that um, this board doesn't have any enforcement power. Um, if we agree to this tree being um, cut down and new trees being planted, and those trees will not be taken care of, um, I'm afraid that we're just going to be stuck with uh, another um, heat island. Um, it is very unfortunate that this this is a prime real estate space on Mass Ave and has been neglected for so long um, for whatever reasons. And I think, you know, as the architect um, concluded, the space, the business space in Arlington is highly sought after. So this could have been utilized. This building, this beautiful building, could have been utilized for so many years. And uh, um, Currently, the owner has not been taking care of this property or the tree very well, and I'm concerned that um, given this big construction project, um, he probably won't be able to take care of this property properly to create maybe um, replacement of the green space that we're going to be losing. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Uh, please. Yes. Madam Chair, may I take the chair and table, please? Uh, yes, please. Michael Ruderman, I'm Alden Street. That's R-U-T-E-R-M-A-N. I've been following this development for maybe 25 years while, during the time that I was uh, one of the commissioners on the Historical Commission. Um, the commission deemed this property would be prefer preferably preserved because it stands as a marker in time for when someone of great means and reputation in town would think no place else to build a mansion except on Mass Ave. That era ended. It ended maybe 10, 15 years after, after the construction of the Atwood House. So it's a moment in time that had lasted for centuries where that's where you wanted to display your, you know, your page in the social register, and it passed. So this house, in addition to being being uh, a wonderful example of uh, you know, Chicken style architecture with the grand enveloping porch and the diamond pane windows, it was really quite a sight in its day. That's why it was important to preservationists. The first, I read through, and thank you for putting so much material uh, you know, linked to tonight's hearing, because it really does uh, recapture what we've been talking about. There's no mention in 2009 in the proceedings of this board as to the condition of the house. Neither is there in 2019. It's, it's unstated. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't rise to the level of being an issue. 
Coming out of 2024, and I read in the memo from uh, Director of Planning and Community Development that, oh, the property has deteriorated over time to the point where restoration is infeasible. Uh, in numerous occasions of trespassers and individuals, which could result in commissions, criminal and civil offenses. Well, whose fault is that? Has this property been properly secured? Over the last 15 years, I don't mean just putting up boards on the windows, which have been pried off numerous times, and I don't mean preserving the architectural elements that were still there, like the front porch that was pried off and never replaced. I mean, has the property truly been, been preserved? Was there ever a perimeter fence, lighting? The, the easiest way to preserve a vacant building is to make it not vacant anymore and get somebody in there. I would say that noise realty has been engaging in what the historical preservation community calls demolition by neglect. And that is simply a more polite way of saying letting it die slowly. So that we can get to the point in 2024 where we can say, oh, restoration is infeasible. I do not take those words at face value. Similarly, I do not take at face value any evaluation of the condition of a tree which could have had pruning systemic pest remediation. You're, in, sort of you're in time. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else, please? Thank you. Uh, Don Seltzer, S-E-L-T-Z-E-R, formerly of Arlington, now living at Harvest Circle Lincoln in a senior community. Many of my new neighbors have mobility limitations and use canes, walkers, or even scooters to get around. Despite their disabilities, they live full, active, and importantly, independent lives. This was made possible by federal and state laws that regulate architectural barriers in new construction. Without these design standards, they would instead be confined to assisted living housing with a loss of dignity and quality of life. I speak here tonight as an advocate for them and others of all ages with disabilities. I will be brief and <coughs> painfully blunt. <clears throat> this proposed replacement for the Atwood House is dead on arrival. It simply cannot be built because it is in flagrant violation of state law. The extent of a compliant design is such that it will be a waste of this board's time to discuss the present plan in any detail. It is deeply disappointing that no one has even noticed this in the five months since drawings were first submitted to the planning department. I would like to refresh everyone's memory as to why there are such laws. The Fair Housing Act gives people with disabilities greater freedom to choose where they will live and greater freedom to visit friends and relatives. It proactively addresses the needs of an evolving population looking ahead at future needs. With the aging of the population and the increase in incidence of disability that accompanies aging, significant numbers of people will be able to remain in and safely use their dwellings longer. That was written by HUD in 1998, and the future is here. One in six Arlington residents are 65 years or older. This board can choose to ignore this issue and simply pass the buck along to inspectional services to reject several weeks or months from now when a building permit is sought. Or maybe this will be another 1,500 Mass Ave tobacco and a drag on for a year or more before the state access board. The choice is yours. I expect that you'll have some questions, which I'll be glad to answer. Is there anyone else uh, who would like to speak this evening? No, no questions. <clears throat> Please. Yeah. Uh, Peter Bermudez, uh, PPR, Indian DES, 19 Belknap Street. Uh, thanks to the chair and the board for listening to this collection of concerns. I just have two. Um, I noted at the outset in the agenda and meeting notice uh, quote, demolition, uh, this meeting would address the demolition of an existing building and construct a mixed use building in its place. I find that not mentioning the destruction of a centuries old tree seems to me a gross oversight. 
and a failure to fully describe this project to the public, who might be concerned about losing a century's old tree. Um, in reference to several of the board members' concerns that there be sympathetic architectural features, that there be an homage to neighboring buildings, note that the first church, uh, first built the Baptist church uh, to the east, <coughs> has a tree on its east side. And I would suggest that perhaps salvaging the tree at 821 would be, might be one step toward creating some sympathetic connection to the neighboring community. <coughs> Um, any other speakers this evening? Hi. Um, is it anywhere is fine. Anywhere is fine. Oh. Uh, my name is Maria Popova, uh, P O P O V A, uh, and I live at 255 Ridge Street. Uh, I'm speaking uh, on behalf of myself, not of any committee or anything, just as a resident and also as a town meeting member of Precinct 13. So I uh, respectfully ask you to please consider saving this tree, and I uh, have a few um, reasons here. I'm not going to go into details because we don't have much time. So there is a number one, the tree health. We now have three uh, health assessments that were done by the uh, different... Could you speak a little louder? It's hard to hear. Uh, we have three uh, health assessments that were done for this tree, and not a single one is saying that this tree is unhealthy. Yes, they do say that the tree shows, shows signs of droughts, heat islands, and neglect. And why would that be surprising? That tree was neglected for a few decades, just as the house, right? But the fact that it persevered and lived through those decades without water, care, or anything actually shows that it's very strong, and it can live for many, many years more. In fact, this species of trees can live up to 500 years. So it's actually quite young by those standards. We already mentioned, Chin already mentioned the issue with the buffers. Please do not take that lightly. Those 15 feet that required between the church and the new building, it's actually not like some, uh, you know, nice to have. It's a bylaw, you know, and iron to bylaw should not be taken lightly. So please do not waive that requirement because if you do actually uh, require that bylaw to be respected, that there is plenty of, of space for that tree. So you kind of have two for one. You have a win-win situation, right? You have the bylaw uh, and you have the tree saved and everybody's happy. There's another, uh, uh, there's another law that is uh, right now broken, which is the environment EDR1 requirement, which actually requires the landscape to be preserved as far as it is practicable. And that does not mean as far as it is convenient for the developer or cheap. It means that as long as there is a feasible solution. And there is a feasible solution because we already saw a plan like that in 2020, right? So just go back to that plan and you have a possible solution. But what is actually even more important is I have right here, I have, you know probably that I had the petition about the preservation of the spine. And here, I want to deliver to you the signatures of 441 people that signed this petition with comments. They are begging and asking you, please consider saving this tree. This is the Arlington community that is speaking up. So I hope that the redevelopment board will really make the right choice to support the interest of the Arlington community that is right here, is asking you, please, preserve this tree and not the you're interest time. of the developer. Thank, Thank you. So I want to deliver That's to you. That's fine. This is the same survey that I my name was. Sarah. Yeah, uh, yeah that's is, fine. But there are Thank also 100 comments that are yeah. speaking to you. Uh, anyone else this evening? Thank you. I'll make this very brief. Winnell Evans, EVA and S, Orchard Place, also a town meeting member. Just to point out, this is not just one tree. I recently took a look at seven projects recently completed and in the works before the board. Seven projects have led already to the loss of over 100 trees. Another one of the projects that the board will be discussing tonight will take down new trees. This project is not just about this tree, it will also mean the removal of at least 10 more trees on the property. This is not sustainable. We cannot keep losing our trees like this. Thank you. Any other comments this evening? Please. Um, Peter Bloom, 15 Jason Terrace, B-L-O-O-M. Um, I was a little surprised to hear that tree being characterized as misshapen. I suggest that uh, 
misshapen is in the eye of the beholder, or maybe in this case, the eye of the developer. Um, I look to that tree multiple times every day for the last 38 years. I'm very fond of it. It's, vi it's visible from, for quite a distance on multiple sides. It, to me, it's a touchstone on, on Mass Ave. There's very few trees with that kind of character anywhere along Mass Ave uh, that could really match the, uh, the presence that that tree has. I'm really sad that the Atwood House looks like it's going to be taken out after all this time. I really enjoyed the vista that it helped create with the church. And I like looking at those two properties, not separately, but as a collective. They, they really complemented each other well. When I look at the project that's being suggested to replace it, it looks like the next shooter drop on Belknap Street. Um, I wish you would reconsider taking that tree out. Uh, when I see it, I don't see the shape and branches. I see uh, an unusual tree. I don't know of any other uh, Austrian Austrian pines in town. I'm not sure if anybody else does. Uh, I think it's worth preserving, and I'm surprised that the developer wouldn't uh, consider that to be the case. Uh, I hope you reconsider. Any other comments this evening? Susan Stamps, member of the tree committee. The tree committee um, had some internal disagreement about how to deal with the Austrian pine tree, so didn't they were actually didn't take a vote on it, but. Um, speaking for myself personally, it would, I'd really like to see it saved. As, as um, Ms. Popova pointed out, there were three letters in the materials, uh, one from the tree warden and the, um, and the DPW superintendent, and another one from a consultant. Um, I might get the third one, but they all said the tree may have some fungal issues, but they could probably be treated. Um, and considering how long that tree has been there, and it's 24 inches in width, it's definitely worth saving. I had suggested in the last hearing that maybe the tree, could, the, the building could just be moved over a little bit to the left as you look at the tree, at the, at the house, the existing house. Um, and so I just wanted to say that also, I, it was hard to tell from the drawings how many street trees are going to be planted pursuant to our new bylaw of the, the developer plants a street tree every 25 feet in front of the building. I don't know if that's two, two more street trees. No, no, no it's it, it, uh, well, I'll tell you a second. Just a second. Yeah. We'll, we'll answer questions okay. at the end. Thank um, you. So however many there are, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would just ask that the, uh, the board require the developer to take care of watering them for the for three years after they're planted as we have provided other way, other places in the Thank you. And with that, we will uh, close public comment this evening. Um, just a, a few items that I want to clear up. One is that the tree warden um, did not characterize this as definitely, you know, a tree that could be saved. They were concerned about the feasibility of treating the um, the stress and fungal issue due to the location to Mass Ave. And in our previous hearing, the board also discussed concerns around being able to save this tree, even if the, house, the uh, proposed development was slightly shifted due to the uh, extent of the, um, the root system of, of the tree. So I do want to point that out um, and also identify that in a prior hearing, the board did actually request the reason why you see additional trees along the street in compliance with the um, bylaw regarding street trees is that was a request that I made of the applicant at our prior meeting. So that has been addressed. Um, let's see if there are any other um, questions or comments that the board has uh, this evening, starting with Steve. Yeah, there is, um, I'll, I'll get into a little bit big picture stuff, just you know, my thought process. Sure. Um, a lot of the time, a lot of the things I think about when I'm up here looking to <coughs> permit applications are the state's decarbonization goals. So the idea of getting reducing greenhouse gas emissions and hopefully getting to 20 to net zero by 2050. I'm personally skeptical that we'll get there, but you know that's neat. I, I think it's important to try. 
So the, our state's executive office in energy and environmental affairs published uh, in 2020 a, a document called the Massachusetts 2050 Decarbonization Roadmap. And this basically breaks things down sector by sector and talks about, well, you know, here's how we can reduce emissions here, here's the role that this plays, and so on. And there's an entire chapter dedicated to basically, they call it natural and working land, but it's essentially Massachusetts's forests. So our forests are about 3.3 million acres. It's about 60, just under 64% of the Commonwealth land area. And you know, this, you know, 64% of the of Massachusetts that's forest um, absorbs about 7% of our annual emissions. So the other 93% just hangs out in the atmosphere and makes it warmer. And that 93% is, um, you know, it, we have to tackle that. So in terms of something like this, you know, Ar Arlington's biggest sources of biggest source of emissions is buildings. That's about that's that's like two thirds of our emissions. And in this case, we're getting a building that is what leads over. It will have solar panels. It will be electrified. It will meet the state stretch code. Compared to what's there, it's going to be have a significantly smaller greenhouse gas emissions footprint. Another care, the second biggest source of emissions in Arlington is transportation, passenger vehicles, people driving. Now, one of the things that, you know, one of the benefits of being in Arlington um, is that people drive less than other areas of the Commonwealth. And, and the rest of the Commonwealth and in the United States, have vehicle emissions are the biggest source of emissions, uh, passenger vehicles in particular. But putting someone in Arlington, they're going to drive roughly 1,500 miles less per year, per vehicle per year, than the Commonwealth as a whole. That's a savings of you know, nearly three quarters of a ton of CO2. And in this particular location, it's right down the street from a drug store, from a food store, from town center. There's plenty of opportunities to take trips by walking rather than you know, driving. Um, so, you know, in terms of like the long-term goal to reduce greenhouse emissions and decarbonize, you know, progress is usually a couple steps forward and a step back. Um, I think that's what we have here, but I think, you know, I, I'm comfortable with, with, with going in that direction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Steve. Gene. Uh, maybe the architect can tell us how many street trees are going to get planted? Yes, uh, there are, uh, on Mass Ave there are nine new street trees being planted in addition to the existing ones that are there. Uh, and total, there are eight trees being removed, none of which are extremely significant other than the Austrian pine that people have mentioned. There is one tree being transplanted and there are 14 new trees being planted for the record. Thank you. So we're doing a lot in planting additional trees and in having a, a, a major landscape plan uh, for the site. Uh, in addition, we do show, Madam Chair, um, that on sheet LO2, the, the trash enclosure is wood fence around right there. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. I appreciate that. See you. Thank you. I'll just mention for the street trees that because the property is not only the Atwood House, but also where CVS is, they're going to plant trees approximately every 25 linear feet from the CVS edge of the property all the way to the Atwood House edge of the property. So, and that was a request that, uh, more than a request that we had made of the applicants um, the last time. And you know, one, one of the interesting things is when thinking about trees is not, and I've, I've written about trees. I've worked for an uh, environmental nonprofit. I can say a lot more than Steve said about forests and how much they do and the threats on forests and things like that. But you know, I will say that it's not really helpful to just look at it at a moment in time. At this moment in time, there are X number of trees. Those trees will get old. Some of them will die. 
if you plant new trees, there's going to be a point in time at which those new trees are providing more shade and taking more carbon out of the atmosphere than the current trees take. Now, where the shift is depends on a number of factors. And I couldn't begin to tell you where it would happen in this case. But what we do know is there is some problem with the um, Austrian pine. And what we also know is that because of its location, it doesn't provide any shade onto the sidewalk and any shade onto Mass Ave. The shade just goes this way from the, from the CVS um, to the church. I went out and looked at various times of the day to look to see where it cast shadows. So I, th I, I mean, I think I'll speak for all of us who are very sensitive to those sorts of things, but we also have to take it into context. Thank you, Gene. Kim? No, I think uh, we spoke enough here. Okay, great. Um, so what I'd like to do is recap some of the items that we uh, discussed to uh, um, bring back for uh, a continuance of, of this hearing. So what I'd like to do is run through these, and then I will propose to the board that we make a motion to continue both this hearing as well as the earlier hearing that was reopened um, until a date that we will determine with Director Ricker this evening. So. The list um, of items that I have uh, to be addressed <clears throat> is uh, to provide a written confirmation of the types of retail that are prohibited um, per the CVS lease in the absence of being able to provide the excerpt. Provide a written confirmation that the tenants have full access through the drive aisle to the spaces in the rear of the building. Jean, did I capture your request? Um, indicate the height of the uh, roof trellis. Um, provide additional articulation around the windows and on the side facades, as we discussed, um, especially the facade facing the church. Um, consider the language around the uh, front uh, deck for the second and third levels, and uh, continue, uh, consider the context of the, um, of the neighborhood. Um, Review the renderings and the elevations. They, they currently don't appear to match. So again, let's let's make sure that those are um, clear as to whether this is siting or panelized material. Um, review and identify a location for the tenant signage on the first floor. Um, uh, for. Relocate the, uh, the condensing condenses. units, thank you. Uh, the condensing units, um, uh, consider moving the condensing units on the right side of the building east. to the to the roof, thank you. Uh, east side of the building, plan east to the, to the roof and uh, screening for the condensing units on the plan west side and ensure that the new fence between the church and the Atwood house is a material other than chain link. Also surrounds around the, the windows. I, I did have that. So articulation. So okay. yes, dimensional, yeah, we'll dimensional uh, articulation around the windows. Steve, did, was there anything? Thank you, Todd. Okay. Um, they had the sign ban for retail. Yes, um, to come back with a um, uh, plan for tenant signage on the first floor. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jean, go ahead. If, if Mr. Seltzer would be so kind as to send us an email explaining why he thinks the building is not ADA compliant, I'd be very happy. I've been sending the board emails. Thank you. Oh, that's, so Thank that's you. Okay. That's okay. Um, let's just respond to Jean's request. Um, uh, the, with that, I will see if there is a motion from the board. Uh, first of all, let's look at dates, actually. Um, so what is our next available hearing date? I want to say, Sarah, is it November 7th? Depending on the day, if it's late, That's a Thursday. So, it's not so we have November 4th, 4th or 18th. So I think part of the 18th, 18th you'd prefer? 18th, OK. That should be fine. All right. So is there a motion from the board? Let me pull everything up here. Is there a motion from the board to continue docket 3798 for 821 Massachusetts Avenue <coughs> to uh, the evening of November 18th? And so 
you want to do them together? I'll do, I'll do them separately, if we could take separate votes. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This uh, will be continued to November 18th for docket number 3798. And is there a motion to continue docket number 3348 for 821 to 837 Massachusetts Avenue, also to the evening of November 18th? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Oh, Madam Chair, is it possible if there's going to be other things on that night that you put this hearing after? You'd like to, you'd like to be? Yes. yes. Okay. Sure. Thank you. You can do that. <coughs> Just make a note. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate all the materials you brought this evening thank and for your willing, you. willingness you to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. It's helpful to see those things. We'll revise it. No problem. We'll just um, have a quick minute while they pack up their materials and then we'll open our next hearing. They work very well. Next agenda item this evening is the public hearing for docket number 3821, 513 to 515, and 517 to 15, 519 Massachusetts. We will be opening this hearing <clears throat> this evening. Um, I would invite the applicants to please join us here at the front of the room. Thank you very much. Um, so I'd like to start off by inviting uh, Director Rickard to please introduce the project. Great, thank you. So this is the project at 1513, 1515, 15, 15, and 1517, 1519 Mass Ave. Uh, the applicant proposes to demolish the existing single family and two family buildings and construct a one mixed use building containing nine residential units and one commercial unit on the property located at 1513 to 1515 and 1517 to 1519 Mass Ave in the B1 Middle Office District. Um, they are looking for relief from um, several dimensional requirements, um, including front side rear yard open space and FAR, and also some relief related to uh, bicycle parking um, materials submitted, which the board is in receipt of, includes their application, dimensional parking information, the impact statement, site plan, lead checklist, landscape plans, and architectural drawings. Thanks. Great, thank you very much. So I'll turn it over to the applicants. If you could please introduce yourselves. Um, you'll have up to uh, 10 minutes to introduce the project to the board, which time we will um, ask you any questions we may have. We'll open this up for public comment and then um, come back to discuss the project. So I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you very much. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Director Ricker. My name is Matt Eckel. Last name spelled E C K E L. I'm an attorney with Fletcher Tilton on behalf of the applicant. Uh, with me is Eric Zacherson from Context, the project architect. We also have Gene and Ilya from IG Investments, the owners and applicants uh, for this proposal. Uh, so Director Ricker did a nice job introducing the project, but I'll briefly <laughs> give a little bit more background and then uh, I know it's already been a long night, but we'll go through the presentation briefly and then turn it back over to you. So uh, as mentioned, we are seeking to combine uh, two existing lots into one lot, just under 9,000 square feet. Uh, currently, there are two residential structures, one on each lot. We're proposing to raise both of those and erect a new mixed-use building uh, with nine total residential units, one commercial space, which is actually proposed as uh, IG Investments uh, real estate office on the ground level. There's nine parking spaces, 16 uh, interior long-term bike parking spaces, and four short-term, which are proposed to be uh, outside on the exterior. As mentioned, the subdistrict is a B1. Uh, the site, <coughs> excuse me, is located just a few properties over from the Lexington border, and we also abut the uh, minimum bikeway directly in the rear. Uh, the, the neighborhood itself is made up of a mixture of uh, residential everywhere from single family to multifamily uh, residential apartment buildings, as well as commercial uses and mixed uses. Uh, currently, the project includes eight market rate units and one affordable unit, as well as, again, the commercial space on the ground level. Uh, just to walk through the overall uh, floor plan, or unit breakdown, I should say, we're proposing six two-bedroom units, one two-bedroom plus unit that has an office, 
and then two three bedroom units. All units would have access to a private deck as well as interior uh, washer dryer for uh, laundry services. The units range, or I should say they average about uh, 1,162 square feet, ranging between 880 at the smallest and 1,620 square feet at the largest. Um, just going back, I guess, uh, Director Rigger, if we can go back to, I guess we'll start back at the beginning real quick and just switch over. So this is the um, site plan here. You can see kind of in the red, orange dashed outline is the two lots together. You can see how we just have a couple lots to the left there before we head into Lexington. Um, across the street, as, as the board is well familiar, is uh, 1500 Mass Ave, which has uh, quite the history, uh, kind of on the corner over there, as well as some uh, multifamily residential moving down Mass Ave uh, towards Arlington Heights. Um, quickly going through the dimensional regulations, uh, a few updates, I think what was, what was just mentioned in the record. Uh, as the board may know, at one point, not too long ago, this was proposed as a four-story building. Uh, realizing that was uh, likely not the right path, we did reduce it to the three stories. <clears throat> and with that came some changes. Uh, one, we've now um, increased our bike parking. So I do believe we meet the bike regulations with the 16 uh, long-term spaces as well as the four short-term spaces. Uh, open space this is also an error on our part, which might have caused some confusion because of its location in the B1 district. Uh, open space is actually calculated based on the lot size, not on the square footage proposed. So on the square footage proposed of the, the GSF, uh, we are at 17%, but when calculated against the lot size, we're actually approximately 26%. So we do exceed the 20% open space as well uh, through the uh, side rear yards as well as the private decks. So just a couple updates on that. In terms of the front yard, we're proposing a four foot setback which is deficient of the 20 feet that's required. However, as this is on Mass Ave and in the B1, uh, we feel this is going to break the streetscape. We have uh, three, essentially, doors, one leading to the, um, the transformer room, uh, which will be designed as a door to kind of break up the facade, as well as the main entrance to the residential, which leads to the lobby and the elevator. And then the third main door will go to that commercial space. We are proposing one uh, garage entry which will service the nine uh, parking spaces, which provides a one-to-one -one parking ratio. We would be looking to take advantage of the exemption for the uh, mixed-use building, not requiring parking for the first 3,000 square feet of commercial space. Uh, in terms of the side yards, you're required to have 10. I believe we have eight on the left and seven on the right, which you'll see in our landscape plan is a combination of permeable paper walkway as well as uh, landscaping, which goes all around the perimeter of the building. Uh, in the rear, we're also required to have 10 feet. Uh, we are proposing decks in the rear, so the closest corner of the deck is actually only three inches from the property line, but the first floor at grade is ranged between six and 13 feet. So we do need relief for the rear yard, but because of the shape of the property, uh, as well as the design of the building, that ranges a little bit again from three inches where the deck is all the way up to over 13 feet at our, at our largest point. Uh, with that, I think we can go to the next slide. So these are the existing conditions. As mentioned, uh, it's a combination of two residential uh, buildings. The one on the right is an existing two-family, and the one uh, on the left, which is depicted on the bottom right, is kind of set back far off the, the street and has fallen into a state of somewhat disrepair. That's a, an existing uh, single family is classified, uh, but it almost reads more as a, a, a barn and, and secondary structure. Next slide, please. So this is the site plan. Again, this just depicts a lot of what I've gone through already. Um, you can see it, uh, obviously not color coded, but we have a landscape plan coming up. You can see all around the perimeter, we are proposing uh, a mixture of fencing and, and natural screening and buffering with uh, perennials, trees, shrubs, and arborvitaes. Uh, we have the uh, main entrance, it's kind of right down the middle to the residential lobby. You can see the lobby uh, as, as labeled there, leading to um, some mail areas as well as uh, the elevator. On the far right is that commercial space, which comes in just under 1,100 square feet. And then over to the back left, you can see the nine parking spaces. Uh, we are proposing, again, one-to-one -one parking with EV charging stations. Uh, we're also proposing a kind of trash, back of house, potentially additional bike storage in the back right corner there. That's kind of all the bonus space that we're um, continuing to flush out. Uh, next slide, please. So we did, as uh, not mentioned, but we do have a landscape plan by Verdant uh, landscape architecture. 
Uh, so you can see here a little bit more color coded and a little bit more uh, visually descriptive of what we're proposing. Kind of uh, some planters out front, uh, which won't in any way you know, impede the access to the building, and then uh, landscaping really around the, the back three sides, the two sides and the, and the rear. Uh, this gives you an example of some uh, potential permeable pavers. We are proposing those both in front of the office and in front of the main entry, as well as on the left side walkway, which provides another means of ingress and egress uh, to the uh, parking area. Next slide, please. Again, impossible to read on this, but that gives a full breakdown of what we're currently proposing in terms of species uh, and a mixture. Uh, I mentioned it already uh, oak trees, arborvitaes, perennials, and some shrubs. Uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Eric Zapperson. He can walk through the floor plans, uh, building materials, and elevations in a little bit greater detail. Thank you. Matt, next slide, please. So uh, um, this plan, which shows the second floor, shows the, the first four units. Um, in the lower left, you see uh, the 1,150 square foot two bed, two bath. Uh, adjacent to that, an 1,170 square foot two bed, two bath. So we're talking about spacious, uh, uh, comfortable units. The two units facing the rear uh, are even bigger than that, about 1,285 square foot. Uh, unit and then the, the biggest unit in the building the 1620 square foot three bed two bath which actually has two of the uh, of the private inset decks in the upper right next slide and then the, the top floor here has five units uh, these range in size um, they're two bed two bath units uh, across the board each with its own private deck 75 to 90 square feet for each each deck um, and then uh, as I said, uh, the range in size from um, 850 to 1170. Next, next slide. The, the roof, uh, which would have um, a little bit of mechanical equipment, but we, we don't plan to activate. And then the elevations here show uh, a combination, uh, what we're currently working with, which is a combination of um, cement fiber panel boards, um, a little bit of uh, accent boards, both at the insets of the decks and at the, uh, around the retail and uh, lobby entries in order to uh, help those uh, attract the attention and, 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 and signal that those are the places that you would enter. Uh, the drawing on the left is the front elevation, which shows in the lower right, shows the retail space and, and uh, a couple of large windows uh, into the commercial or the office space. And then uh, the door in the middle of the building is, is the residential lobby. Um, so you have that, that kind of primary focus. And then above that, on the second floor, you see the two inset decks, which are uh, highlighted with the vertical paneling. We're thinking about something warm and, and wood look or wood, wood like, um, something that makes uh, people who are on the decks um, feel like they want to kind of touch and feel the walls. Uh, the right and left sides are, are intentionally a little bit quiet. You see the right side on this uh, slide, on the next slide, just the left, uh, which are both largest cement fiber panel with uh, a few windows uh, <coughs> where they functionally make sense. And then in the rear of the building, again, we have a series of decks on the second and third floor. These are similar material, uh, something that, that's warm and um, uncomfortable. Next slide. Some of the materials we've been thinking about using um, on the left is the, uh, uh, the current Position for what we're, the cement fiber panels are going to be something kind of white, a little off white. Uh, the color uh, um, in the middle is something evocative of an old uh, a barn style, uh, an aged wood. Whether or not that actually ends up being a, a Nichiha panel or something that's longer lasting, we're going to completely figure it out. And it'll depend on the scope and scale of, of the decks and how much of it we end up using. But we definitely want something that, that makes those those spaces feel really special. Next slide. And then uh, on the left here, we did a rendering of it, uh, of the uh, proposed building kind of sitting in the, the neighborhood to see where it would be next to the existing uh, adjacent homes on the right and the left. Um, and then a couple of uh, flat elevations to just uh, on the right to show the, the color and texture of the building. Great. Thank you, Eric. Um, I think with that, then, concludes our presentation. We obviously have some additional materials we submitted if the board has any questions on those or questions in general, but we thank you for your time. Great, thank you very much. Um, with that, I will turn it over to the members of the board. Um,
for any questions. And we'll start, um, let's start with you this time, Kay. Okay, you asked for it. <laughs> um, on your sheet L3, you show um, roof deck uh, guards. Is that not there anymore? Or is that, that is just? The, yeah, the, the, the roof deck has been removed as part of removing the floor. It was so, a, a walkout deck. From so we can just delete the whole sheet then? Um, the plant, the plant, some of the plantings on there might be uh, relevant, so that's why I left it on. So the plantings are going to go on the roof? No, some of the, the plantings on the left side of this sheet exist around the perimeter of the building. Okay. Because I couldn't find where this. Uh, Apologies. As, as mentioned, we did. We started with a, a scaled up uh, pullback fourth story, okay. and with that, that included a common walkout <laughs> roof deck that everyone would have access to. But when we removed the fourth floor in its entirety, the roof deck went away with it. I'm going to hold that thought because I want to talk to my other board members about uh, a fourth floor. Mm -hmm. But that's a separate conversation, okay? But for now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to look at, you right now you say this is a mixed use building. And when I look at, can you put that elevation uh, axon? What are they had there? No, it was an axon and no elevation. Uh, when it's in context? Yes. It's at the end of the deck. Yeah, uh, it's. Wait, here's one? Yeah. yeah. One more. Yeah, because it shows that yep. it, it's rounding and also shows the elevation of the building. You're saying this is a mixed-use building. I see only half of the first floor having any um, connectivity with the street. All right. So you got you got a, you got a front lobby that's maybe a quarter of the thing of the front elevation and a quarter of the elevation that's your uh, office space, and then it just goes way back in a big bowling alley for your office space. And then you got two humongous doors in the front. One's a garage door and the other one's to a electric room or fire pump or whatever kind of space there is. That's always going to be closed. Mm -hmm. That is not interactive with this, uh, with, uh, with, with this uh, sidewalk. Okay, and you're saying you're pulling the building forward because you want it to interact with, this, uh, with the streetscape. I applaud you for that. That's a great thing. That's, great. That's a noble cause. But what you've done here is didn't do that. Okay, you got to figure out a way of getting more Covers on frontage, frontage yeah. on the first floor toward the street, not way on the side going way back, okay? And uh, the other thing is, right now, the way you show the garage, if I look at the garage, and that's the. This one here. Yeah, okay. It's totally enclosed. Correct? Correct. Yes. So this garage will have to be ventilated yes. for carbon monoxide. Yes, correct. Please show me where your louvers are, your intake louvers, your exhaust louvers, okay? That's going to affect, because they're going to be big. They can make a lot of noise. So I want to know, you know, where is it blowing? Is it blowing into the bike path? Is it blowing into your side neighbors? And is that going to be an issue for them in the future? Right? My suggestion. Make it open, okay? You know, you want to secure, you can do that, but make it open, all right? And you don't have to worry about this, because that's a real pain to have CO2 monitors and exhaust fans and this and that, all right? Um, right now, you're asking for, um, Some relief, but uh, uh, he said this, uh, on the back, these are patios where the decks that come off that will be overhanging. So each of the units on the second and third floor have decks. There is also a patio on the ground floor, which is common, which is not assigned to anybody, but that would be entered. That's on the that's a grade. How do you get there? So you either walk um, through the most likely through the garage to that double door you see right by the okay. place there, and then down a, down a flight of stairs because the back of the building, the back, the ground back there is going to be lower than the, the garage, just from the natural grade of the site. 
So that's a public space? Public to the tenants. Yes. Yes. Okay. I used to see anybody using that. Um, if someone lives there, you got to go through the garage to go way down back there. It's, it's going to be, I just think it's, it's not a real friendly space. If you're going to allocate space that's being used, it's not a very friendly space. No, our, our intention is that people will use their decks more likely than that. Uh, yes, but you're creating a space back there right off the bike trail, which is not going to be well, the, the intention is that it would be a green space. We did that f more for the bike trail, as much for the bike trail as, as for the tenants here. We wanted to create a green space back there so that the building wasn't sitting right close to the, to the bike trail. But yeah, we, we intend that tenants will probably more likely be using their own private decks. So is there a fence along the back between the right back? Right it's just it's green, uh, it's uh, screen. Yeah. Not, not a fence, you, but, but... I know what's there now because I walked it, okay? But Sorry, I'm, I'm in on the design. It's landscaping rather than... So there's no fence, fence there? Yeah. So anybody riding by... Could climb the hill up to this and, and into the back. Of and hang out there and whatever. The, yeah, and there's yes. very little monitoring because it's almost a story and a half below. Mm -hmm. And it's all covered with shrubs and everything else and there's no active use in there. I'm just saying I'm not that I'm concerned about that space okay. you as an owner probably want to do the same thing you know what's gonna happen there ideally we'd love to build some kind of access for our tenants to go down on the bike path and not utilize the cars and use the beautiful bike path alongside um, that was the main goal of that area was that'd be hard that'd, that'd be very hard to do because you deal with exactly. the MBTA okay to tell me right now right and to that's what official. we kind of learned yeah. okay. <laughs> but the idea originally for that space what and that's why we did that door access that you can take your bike i'm just seeing it i'm just seeing what it is right now yeah exactly i have concerns yep. okay um so you'd like them to consider adding a fence adding a fence or have some sort of controls or getting rid of that and make it more green space um i'm assuming you have solar on the roof right so can you indicate where those panels are going to go on the roof? Um, where your mechanical equipment is going to uh, go? I don't need you to size everything or else, but where's your mechanical pen? Is it going to be screened? Is it not going to be screened? Um, so the building's going to be all electric, so you're going to probably go some sort of heat pump system, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to show me where those, where all those condensers are going to go. Um, when I look at this elevation, it's pretty bland and it's um, it's modern, but it's not. Uh, it doesn't look that exciting to me. Um, you know, uh, if you look at yes, there is the um, the building next door. You know, fifteen hundred. You know, but that's you know, a pretty handsome building. You know, uh, with the trim and all. It, it, it does. That's not. Uh, modern, but I'm asking you to put a little more thought into the elevation to make it a little more exciting. That's all. Okay. I'm not going to tell you about how to do things. That's, yeah, that's your job. But I'm just saying, when I look at the thing, it just looks like a couple of blocks. You know, the renderings you showed before, just a couple of blocks with a bunch of doors on the bottom and, and no street life. Can you pay attention to that a little more, add a little more to it, like you know, of that elevation, at least the front elevation. Okay. Uh, the side ones, uh, you should look at that too, but eventually it will grow in and it won't be as important. But right now, it's the, it's the big point block. Everybody's going to see from all three sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, It is pretty well treated up from the uh, bike path, so you're not going to really see from the bike path that much. And it's a pretty good sized hill uh, to climb up. So it's, it's elevation wise, you'll, you know, when you're riding the bike, you're not going to see it. Okay? So. I'll leave it at that. I think Rachel, you can probably get more into it. I will, but first I'm going to give, thank you, Ken. I will give um, uh, Steve okay, so, um, opportunity. All right, so I was going, one of my questions was to do with uh, detail on the roof and would there be solar? And it sounds like mm -hmm. the answer is yes, and uh, it would be nice to see the uh, plans along with the other details that Mr. Law mentioned. Uh, will these be rental or condos? As of right now, we. we want to do those condos. Okay. Um, I think that that would be a really good fit for our community. Um, and the different bedroom sizes, I think, is going to be very good. Can you 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I, we, we, our intent is to, do, is to um, sell those condos and keep the commercial space for ourselves to manage the building. Um, we believe that the different sizes of the units is going to be very appealing to, it's not just all two bedrooms, one type of a community. I think there's going to be, hopefully families that will be interested in a three bedroom and, you know, a single couple and one bedroom and so on. That was the idea of <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with them. Um, I mean, the, the units are nice, a nice size. Um, you know, I was also struck by, um, to me, I, I sort of felt like the commercial space was a little, was, it felt almost like an afterthought. Like, I, I agree with the idea that more, there should be more frontage. Um, and it sounds like a, you'll be using the office. So you've already got a tenant. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's great to hear. Um, the one part about this that, I mean, well, I mean, we'll discuss this as a board, but for me, it's going to probably be the biggest sticking point, <clears throat> is in this district, the maximum floor area ratio is 0.75. And what you're proposing is a little more than double that. Um, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> um, but I'll just leave it at that for now. Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Gene. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for presenting this proposal. Um, how many residential units are currently in those buildings there? Just two of the barn has been used. So, just two. So I'll, I'll just mention, in case you don't know this, and this is just me, you might be here a year too soon. We are intending to go to town meeting for spring 2025 to rezone all of the business area of Arlington Heights. Now, I have no idea what it may be and whether your lot would be better or worse than it is in the B1 district, but it's worth thinking about whether you want to go ahead with this, I'm not saying not to, or see what happens in town meeting if you end up with a different sort of zoning. We're not far enough in the process, I think, to say anything for certain, but it's worth thinking about, especially related to the FAR, which I'll talk about. Um, you had mentioned the open space. Appreciate the correction. The um, application requires a separate page showing how the open space was determined, which I didn't see, so if you could provide a page showing how the open space separate page was determined. I think it's something like footnote number three on the page of the application. Yeah. Says it and needs an open. Mr. Ben, we, we do have that. I apologize if I didn't submit it. It's yeah, okay. Um, yeah. We have a, the zoning bylaw requires at least 50% solar on the roof, so it's not an option. Um, and you should look at the zoning bylaw section 6.4 and also the Redevelopment Board Rules and Regulation 14, number eight, talks about what you have to submit to us so that we can take a look at what the solar is going to be. So it's not enough just 50% solar. Please take a look at that so you'll know what you need to give us for that. Um, our bylaw, requires in the business districts required minimum transparency of the ground floor principal facade visible from the public right of way is 60%. I don't think this is close to 60% transparency, which I think picks up on what my colleague, Mr. Lau said. You have to meet that standard at least 60% transparency. And you're not, I don't think you're anywhere near minimum 60% transparency. That's in the zoning um, bylaw. Um, the floor area ratio, the only other time that we've encountered it, we determined that we did not have the authority to waive or change the floor area ratio. And the last time was that building at the corner of Mass Ave and Lake. And Lake where even though the previous town council said we had lots of different authority, he said we couldn't change the floor area ratio. Now the, the memo points out 
that so there can be some change um, where um, there are more affordable units, but I don't think that's applicable here because I don't think you meet the standard. So I think you're up against a real problem with the floor area ratio under the current zoning. My, my um, colleagues may disagree. Um, one of the interesting things about the building, and this was touched on before, is that it backs on um, the Minuteman bikeway. And we have design guidelines that have a whole section on what you should do if your building is on backs or fronts on the Minuteman bikeway. Um, it has encourage and discourage. Uh, example are appropriate setback from the trail with a um, vegetated buffer, discourage developments that turn their back on the bikeway. This <coughs> feels to me awful a lot like it turns its back on the bikeway with just this blank wall. I will point out that on the, um, the, um, the page with the garage, it shows a rear door going out, but this real elevation doesn't show that door going out, so I think that needs to be corrected. And I think if you could think about whether you can do something so it doesn't feel like the building is just like the back is facing the bikeway, I think that would be, that would be helpful. Um, Yeah, so you should take a look at the um, commercial design guidelines. You can find them on the town website or get a copy from planning and take a look at what it says about when your building is on the bikeway. Um, public shade trees, which you heard in the previous one, every 25 linear street. I don't think there are any trees right now, public shade trees in front of this, so you'll have to add um, public shade trees every 25 meters straight. Obviously not right in front of the garage, <laughs> but you know that has to be added also. Um, the lead checklist, it's almost all question marks. We like to see what you're actually going to do as opposed to all question marks, and there should be a narrative that goes along with it. And lastly, um, how, should, how will stormwater be handled? You haven't said anything about stormwater that I could find, and that is a requirement. Stormwater, we did prepare it. We have a memo from the uh, school of engineering. Do we, do we get discussing that? Discussing how it's... I, all right, maybe we just didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, it's just a confusion because we withdrew from the, from the original board. Okay, story. so yeah, so, so those... So, okay. um, I think it's on this side. Is it Civil plans right there, and we did have a narrative as well, which we can we can okay. soften that if it's not far from okay. So, it's, well, as long as there's something from the town engineer about it, that would be great. Thank you. That's all I have. That's all you have. Great. Thank oh, you. One, no, I'm sorry. One no, one please one. go ahead. The facade. When I looked at <clears> it, it looked like concrete blocks. Tell, tell me, tell me that it's not going to look it's like not. concrete blocks. What's it going to look like? I can't tell. From the rendering. I think all this feedback, especially from the previous map project here and it, from you guys, um, you know, we knew that this is not going to be a one pass. We we wanted this feedback so we could go back and present it to you guys, hopefully something that we can all you okay. know love. <laughs> That's the key point. Okay. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I think my colleagues have picked up a lot of the items that, that I have, you know, the facade. Um, the uh, frontage of the commercial space, window articulation. Um, are these intended to be operable windows for the units? Okay. Um, which unit is your affordable unit? Um, we have not discussed that. Okay. Um, so, obviously, want them again to get your feedback. Sure. So there are minimum sizes, and um, the Department of Planning and Community Development can share those with you so that we make sure that that one is appropriately sized per the um, state requirements. I think that's something um, important to identify. <coughs> um, 
in terms of um, parking within the, the building, do you have, um, sorry, I'm just pulling this up again. You have these all currently as full parking spaces. Um, do you have the ability to create an accessible space? Um, you know, that's something if you're, if you have a tenant who has a, a need, um, I believe that you are going to need to, to have the space to be able to create an accessible parking space. So that's something that I'd ask you to take a look at as well. You're under 20. Yeah, I think it's going to help because we're going yeah. to have to obviously change a lot of the parking. Having that feedback. Okay. Yeah, if you require, I think, one or two. I can't remember what the rule is for nine spaces. I'll need to check the architectural access board rules. Yeah, uh, actually, the access board says that under 15, you don't need any. Right, but you need to have, if if there is um, somebody who re requires one, you have to be able to provide it. Right. I believe that's how it's read, but you are responsible ultimately for the access board requirements. Um, my last, <coughs> excuse me, um, my last item is on the commercial space. So. Um, you indicated that you know you will be occupying the, the commercial space. If you are intending, I'm assuming that you are intending to sign the space for your business in some way. That's something that we would want to see. It's difficult for me to tell right now, and obviously you're going to relook at the commercial space frontage in general. Think about how you're going to create a sign band or um, some way for you to design. Obviously, if it's a um, business use as opposed to a retail use. It doesn't need to be lit signage, but we do want to see where you intend to install signage. Um, the other thing, it was difficult for me to tell what the width of this commercial space was since there weren't dimensions. If you can provide, um, you know, some dimensions on, on this, these, um, the commercial space so that we can understand that, that would be helpful. Um, the other item that I um, wanted to see, the, the venting for the, the units, laundry, plumbing, et cetera, are you looking at doing that through the running chases and doing that through the roof? Okay, because we do not want to see that coming out of the front of the building. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't either. <laughs> not everybody understands not, that, not, so not, that's not. why I'm saying this. <laughs> I thought there was like a code on the side. Nope, so I that to we would like wall. to run that up. Um, all right, that's all I had. Anybody, any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to discuss amongst us for a minute, okay? Because this right now is spot, a spot zoning. Because this is to be one stuck in this um, mass area. It's the Swiss cheese part of our okay. yes. zoning map, yes. Uh, <coughs> is it? A way of us granting relief. I'm not sure do we have it or, or have authority or not. I'm just going to ask to grant another a fourth floor here because that bring the unit count up to uh, 13, right? And that would add one more affordable unit, wouldn't it? Good. I mean, we would, the parking is going to be the difficult part because we're ready right now with this for maximizing. Yeah, but I, I, uh, that's something else we get to the next step is... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean uh, to jump a step. That's just but, uh, my mind thinking. Uh, we can always cut back on the one-to-one -one relation. We get down to 0.5, right? Can we talk about that at one point? No, we can. They can provide a transportation demand okay. management plan. But then we get down to 0.5 or something like that. 0.25. 0.25, okay. 75% reduction. <laughs> yes. I, I know I had it at zero one time, and I got overruled. But yes. But there's something, you know, but I just want to talk about, because this seems like a, a, a good spot to, if we can do that, or uh, allude to what Gene was saying, maybe a year, a, a year early, I don't know. It, it does seem a good spot for something like that. I personally don't think, based upon what we did a couple of years ago, that we have the authority to give them relief from the floor area ratio. I also think we don't have the authority to give them another floor when the um, limit is in the bylaw. That's why maybe when the Arlington Heights rezoning work is done, 
maybe the town meeting will adopt it and maybe they'll have more flexibility. I'm just talking right now. I'm not saying it's I'm like uh, grant you anything, okay? Just from you know financial, I know it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I get the board doesn't really, I, I, it's, it's our problem, not your problem, I get it. But to wait two years to then present again and then go through the permitting and then we're, we're talking breaking ground at best probably three years, right? Um, I just financially, to one building, zero income whatsoever. The other building, I would have to put in a lot of money to get into a rentable, you know, suitable housing. Um, you know, our only, if the board can't find us a relief, grant us the relief, our only other option is to go back to the drawing board and maybe put two townhomes in there, two separate by rights. And, I mean, I think that obviously this amount of housing and affordable unit would serve Arlington much better than four luxury townhomes, but financially that's what kind of, you know, we do. certainly appreciate that. Yeah. And I, and just so I, I'm I not appreciate. Trying to like put no, one hand or no. The other. I, mean, I think we're just trying to also completely too. understand. And I think you know my colleagues are just trying to creatively share with you what what options might be. So I, I appreciate your um, your situation as well, Steve. No, I, I also appreciate the situation. I mean, <laughs> this is the reality of doing this sort of stuff. Um, no, I was going to mention it during uh, new business, but you know. I, Considering looking at the B1 district in relation to the other B districts, it is um, it poses its own unique set of challenges, and I'm not sure that's something that we could address in the context of a, a special permit hearing. And that may be something that may be worth filing that at filing some amendments there at town meeting, in addition to the Arlington Heights rezoning. I will I add that, that to our 2025 list. Discussion before whether the B1 districts even make any sense anymore. I mean, they were like a 1970s idea, and we're now like 50 years. They're basically residential yeah. districts. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> so um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to bring up the talk, that's all. No, no, no. I'm not yeah, saying one yeah. you know, I, I know it's. <laughs> I mean, we, we I, I, like, <laughs> I like the idea of the place. Yeah. I mean, it needs a little work. I like yeah. the idea, the concept. The work. It's just the concept doesn't necessarily fit with the zoning. With the current zoning. With the current zoning it may fit with the zoning nine months from now, maybe. Did, did the fifteen hundred meet that? It it did. Yeah. 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 It's a smaller. Yeah, but the lots smaller building. Smaller. Understood. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look. But, yeah. but they met, yeah. you guys they, know they met the floor area. Yeah. They had other problems. But. Well, usually when you pull one problem, there's a couple <laughs> other problems that come up. <laughs> and I will say, Madam Chair, through, through yes, you, please. I think it's, um, we want to come in at one-to-one -one parking ratio to meet the guidelines and also provide each unit with one parking space, but that also was a large driver in kind of the orientation of that first floor to make the nine parking spaces work. So knowing that with the transportation demand, uh, you know, uh, management plan, plan I'm yes, sorry. yes. <laughs> like in the word, it gets to get late at night. Um, you know, that the, the board may be open to some reduction in parking. Obviously, it's, we're trying to make this bike friendly. We're right on the bike bikeway. The bus is right there. Trader Joe's is one way. We have a lot of amenities that are walkable or bikeable. Um, there is something to be said to having at least one space per unit, but in, in looking at redesigning the building, knowing that the board may be looking favorably on reducing parking, that will help us at least on the first floor. In terms of the FAR, um, I don't think really, that's going to get you enough. Hasn't really, yeah, <clears throat> we didn't go down that road. We were under the impression um, that was not something you didn't have any authority to give. Uh, yep. um, so we're, we're kind of taking a step back here, I think. We know we're over it, but that's. Uh, that was a surprise. We've had a couple of meetings and thought we were under the impression that uh, it could all be done here, would involve zoning board. I don't know if zoning board has the right to give the FAR or not at all either. And this is back to just you guys, but. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it would essentially require a variance and I don't see a practical path to getting one given that this is a fairly regularly shaped lot um, without, a, you know, say a big slab of ledge in the middle. <laughs> You know, one of the things we, we could do, you know, we um, 
the last time we had an interpretation was from our prior town council. Happy to, again, just to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, have a conversation with our, our current town council, but um, we have been consistent with that in the past, specifically with regard to F FAR. So FAR and height, no ability to deviate, but side yards and open right. space and parking and all the like. It, it, exactly. Yeah. The, I mean, height and FAR are basically the, the the two critical massing elements. You know, how tall is a building, and FAR is how big it is. Um, so, yeah, the the, the smaller or derivative, um, you know, smaller derivative requirements. Uh, I think we're generally willing to. Right. Have those, those more or less facilitate our ability to um, to ensure that the project works, and, and they take a lot of um, contextual mm -hmm. relationships right. in, where um, we have very unique um, abutting property situations often in in Arlington. No, it makes sense. So that's so really the we're difference. Just under the impression that uh, you guys have that authority. Yeah. And again, I'm I'm happy to. Um, I know you put I know you put work into this, and I and I do want to make sure. So I'm I'm more than happy to have you know another conversation with town council. But I don't want to give you the impression that that will necessarily lead to a, a, a different um, outcome than where we are today. Gene, you know, brought up a really good point regarding FAR, and I am glad that, that you did regarding um, our ability here. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> any other comments? No. Okay. No. All right. Um, so with that, we will go ahead and open um, public comment for um, this proposal. Yes. Um, once again, please, uh, anyone who is um, engaging in public comment, you'll have up to three minutes. Please introduce yourself by your first last name. Please spell your last name and indicate your address. Before you begin, can I ask? That director Ricker put up the slide showing the garage layout. I think it's one of the first ones. No, yep, that's the one. Um, oh, yeah. Don Seltzer, still spelled S E L T Z E R, still at Harvest Circle, Lincoln. Um, again, I'm standing to speak on behalf of those with limited mobility. I wasn't a Intending to speak tonight, but then I saw the layout of the garage, and there are one or two things that strike me as important considerations. And unfortunately, it's very fle inflexible. Um, as the chair noted, it doesn't have any current spaces that are marked as accessible or dimension for it. And state law requires that if anyone moves in there, and they have a need for an accessible space, you must provide it. You must provide an original design that makes it flexible enough to put that in. And I think those columns <coughs> are either 17 or 18 <coughs> feet apart in the garage. And based on that, for every accessible space you put in there, you're going to lose another one. So if one person, and remember Arlington, one in six people are seniors, if one person moves in there and needs an accessible space, the total number goes from nine down to eight. If a second person moves in and also wants it, the state law says you have to grant it, number of spaces goes down to seven. Just something for this board to consider. Uh, it's gonna be a particularly sticky situation if this is going to be a condo. You're gonna be selling these units and somehow you're gonna to have to figure out a way to take the lost spaces away from current condo owners and give it to the new residents who want the accessible space. Uh, I'm not sure how you do that. And while we're on the subject of the garage, just one thing I want to note, the building setback is 3.9 feet in the front, I believe. Um, our bylaws require that the drop, and that would be 3.9 feet to the garage entrance. Our bylaws require a driveway visibility of at least five feet unobscured by a building or a shrubbery. Uh, you have tall shrubs on either side. It's completely blind for somebody coming out of the garage and someone walking along the sidewalk there. Uh, you can certainly remove the shrubs, but you still have only 
3.9 feet to the garage. Somehow the garage has to be set back to at least five feet from the property line. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Please. Uh, Asha Kevka, uh, 17 Silk Street. Um, I'm sorry, please spell your last name. Kepka, K-E-P-K-A. Thank you. Um, I haven't attended many of these uh, gatherings there. Um, but one of the last ones I did, there was a gentleman who had property, who was the owner of the property across the street. And there were some issues with um, the walk base. He couldn't remove and there was a limit in parking spaces. And I remember speaking to him afterwards, um, and he was talking about some of the board, uh, he was being encouraged by board members to do certain things, and I uh, appreciate uh, Ken's uh, suggestions, because you want to build more, but I think it's, um, it's very dangerous to sometimes to push developers or, or people to build more or going into certain area where you can create more problems. Um, for example, like you know, putting a fourth floor, they might have to then uh, install an elevator for accessibility, right? So you can create all the issues, and if the board members change, then um, the, the owners, the developers might get stuck with, um, with a problem, like long-term problem. So I'm just, from the observer, observer point of view, I'm a little concerned about that. Thanks. Anyone else this evening? All right. With that, we will close. <laughs> we'll close public comment. Um, let's see. So, um, what I would like to do is to um, I will confirm back with um, Mike Cunningham again because I I know you came today with the assumption that we would be able to work with you on the FAR again to Gene's point that is something that we have um, not um, been able to, to do in the past I will make sure that we um, receive a an interpretation from from Mike um, it was our current town council to make sure that we are all aligned, um, which I think is, is certainly fair to do. Um, that would certainly um, dictate a, whether it's a major change or some of these other changes, obviously, that you would need to, to come back with. So, um, Claire, you and I can, can do that immediately following the meeting. Yep. Um, and uh, what I would like to do is run through the additional list of items that we had discussed this evening. Um, so depending on where we net out with, with that um, decision, we can, um, you, you can evaluate how you would like to move forward. Does, does that sound fair? Any other discussion from the board before I run through well, those items? Sure. I, I kind of got a little lost in the FAR. How far off are they? Double. Double. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. We, like, again, the information we got was like the board likes to see it on the three. So we're like, oh, we're one and a half. This is great. <laughs> you know? Well, um, some of the other districts. Maybe that's where the miscommunication was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, it's just the B1 district. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Okay. Um, so let me run through this other list, and then we will. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll follow up with the town council and um, be able to get back to you on that. So um, we talked about in order to be able to pull the building forward, we really need to be able to see more commercial frontage um, that interacts with the street. Um, there's a 60% transparency requirement for mixed use. Um, we would want you to show the intake and ex intake and exhaust louvers for the parking. Um, since it's to, uh, totally enclosed or to make it open. <clears throat> for the rear space intended for the tenants, really think about the security back there, potentially adding a fence or again, making that, um, making that um, actually usable for the, for the tenants and showing in the rear elevation the egress from the, um, from the parking garage to that rear space. Um, indicate where sol solar is going on the roof. Show mechanical on the roof. Again, not the actual sizes. Where is it going to be located? How is it going to be screened? The condenser locations. 
um, articulate the elevation, obviously in context with both our prior hearing comments and the comments this evening um, around uh, the, cont the contextualization of the um, facade as well. Um, at a page showing how the open space was calculated. Um, at public shade trees per the zoning bylaw. Edit the lead checklist to include a narrative um, and also which of the maybes you are intending to become yeses. Um, ensure, as I mentioned, that you have the ability to create um, accessible parking within the, um, within the uh, parking garage. Um, indicate that the venting for the units will be through the roof rather than through the facade. Um, indicate the affordable unit location or indicate that you will comply with these minimum state requirements for the affordable unit. Um, indicate the width of the commercial space um, and the sign location for the commercial space. That's the list I have. So um, what I would suggest is that we target a date. Oh, sorry, I'm, Steve. Uh, also reviewing the design guidelines for the commercial district. Thank you. Uh, which Mr. Benson mentioned earlier. Okay. Thank you, Steve. The design. Thank you. All right. Um, so, what I think we should do is target a return date, um, and in the meantime, we will um, follow up with town council. And um, once we have that finding, we can decide, you all can decide how you would like to move forward from there. We can always continue the hearing again if that. Um, needs to be done, or if um, you know the application substantially um, changes and you would need to withdraw the application, we can do so and close the hearing, and you um, can come back uh, if, again if that if you decide that it uh, significantly changes. So um, our upcoming hearing dates are November fourth. We already have um, one on the eighteenth. Um, we have December 2nd and December 16th. I just have a quick question. Please. Sorry, I don't know if, uh, if it's the right timing, but just to be clear, is it that the board doesn't have authority to, to find, to give relief on the FAR, or is it because you guys have never, you guys set the president that you guys do not want? We have, the prior town council, um, when this has come in front of us before, in, um, in discussion with town council, they have recommended that the board, um, or they have, we as a board have, have, together with them, decided that we would not grant relief on that FAR. We don't have the authority. Correct. Uh, even if we did, I would not feel comfortable doubling. Right. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to see if there's yeah, any leeway yeah. or what's no, the and, 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 and again, here. it's the massing. It's that significant massing is, is you know, that that is. Um, but if we came back at like 0.95, that's still a no. It's 0.75. No, we have not, we have not granted relief yeah. on the FAR. Yeah, it's 0.75. Yeah, there have been in other towns where it was a similar situation, but we had kind of like that gray area, and they ended up voting, giving us the relief. I'm old saying that it's because of A, B, and C. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but again, that's everything. Again, if we're able to find something in the bylaw that you know that it all be you know comes down to, if we're able to find something in the bylaw which we feel um, is um, you know some sort of a um, an area. Thank you. Yeah. I am fine. clearly <laughs> at my. I am <laughs> not well. <laughs> I do think some of the confusion or misinterpretation was the the exceptions kind of bring you into compliance with a perceived as of right with affordable units with open space. Mm -hmm. Not that you can grant relief to go above the 0.75. Mm -hmm. It almost sets a new as of right. So we didn't necessarily read that as forbidden from giving relief. Understood. Somehow brings Understood. into compliance by the bonus trade-off. Right. Um, so maybe it's how the bylaws written. Maybe it's some communication yeah. issues. And but. that's again where the you know the B one is the previous locations where we looked at this. This was not in a B one. We'll look at it specifically with the with the B one with the town council. But um, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, do we want to set a date? Sure. 
So of those dates that I provided to you, is there a target that you would like us to, we need to continue the hearing to a date this evening, that can change, but let's target. So we had November 4th, 18th, 2nd, and 16th. I think we'll be realistic November 4th won't work between town council and everything, so why don't we do November 18th just to get it on the calendar. Okay. Uh, we don't have, do we have anything? We already have two already. already. Okay, so it, I'm sorry, the 18th is not actually going to be an option. So it's um, December 2nd would be the next available. And there's no way to like put us on the proper fourth before we get an answer from council. Just because like if we're if you will, so you will the that would be next Monday. Every single thing on that list that I just have, you would need to have edited and back to us. So I. I doubt that is possible, but if you think it is, we could target the fourth. If we had an answer tonight, I would have obviously pushed everything. Totally to understand. That, so let's target December 2nd, okay? Um, so with that, is there um, a motion from the board to continue the public hearing for docket number 3821? <laughs> Sorry. 1513 to 15, and. 1517 to 1519 Mass Ave to December uh, December 2nd. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Gene. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. All right. Uh, Thank Chairman you very Board, much. And very Claire much. and I will um, get back to you as soon as we um, speak with town council. <laughs> All right. Uh, that now moves us to agenda item number five, which is a debrief of the uh, joint meeting with the select board. And I will turn it over to Director Ricker. Great, thank you. So we had talked about doing a debrief of this meeting um, at our previous meeting, and the, and the board decided that it would make more sense um, for us to have a conversation about uh, the joint meeting with the select board after um, we had the approved So those have been done. Um, and um, sort of curious uh, as you know, we had kind of gotten started a little bit on a conversation. I know Ken had said a couple things, but had ultimately decided to table it. So if the board is interested in taking that up this evening, we could certainly um, continue to debrief uh, mm -hmm. about that. Can go ahead. I thought we had uh, talked about tabling it until our uh, retreat, and we were going to use that, that up that form there to uh, talk. Yep. We should actually, um, and we can do that under new business, discuss that, I think, for the retreat as well. That's what I thought. That would be right. Yep, and I, I think, quite honestly, it would be, since Shana's not here with us this evening, it might yeah. be good to table this until Shana I agree. Is, is back. I agree. Yeah. Okay? Sounds good. Great. Um, so let's move to agenda item number six, which is the Master Plan um, Amp Up Advisory Committee update. We had, thank you. <laughs> we had um, a resignation on the Amp Up uh, Advisory Committee. Um, Jonathan Gowan um, moved out of Arlington um, and needed, uh, so we needed to uh, uh, appoint an, another member um, to that committee. And so um, we went back to our uh, application materials and our list of applicants. Um, Rebecca Gruber, um, who I think uh, folks on this board uh, know, uh, was next on the list in terms of um, being on the committee I have worked with. Rebecca, in the past, I worked with her on MBTA uh, Communities Working Group. Um, her work with community outreach was um, just great. Um, and I think she would be a, a, a really welcome addition um, to this committee. And Jean had pointed out, you know, um, because, you know, although this is a, a committee that's sort of put together and run by DPCD, ultimately, um, it is an ARB committee. And so we put uh, forth Ms. Gruber uh, tonight uh, to be confirmed to the AMP Up Committee. Great, thank you. Um, any discussion, starting with Steve? I, I think um, I, I agree with Ms. Ricker. Uh, Ms. Gruber did, was was a huge help with the <coughs> outreach during uh, the MBTA community zoning, and I, I think she'd be a, a good addition to the um, advisory committee. Great, thank you. Gene? Uh, agree. Ken? Same here, I couldn't highly, I couldn't, um, she's a great fit. Great. Um, is there a motion to uh, approve the appointment of uh, Rebecca Gruber to the uh, Arlington Master Plan Advisory Committee? So motion. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. 
please pass on our congratulations to Rebecca sure. and Thank our thanks. <laughs> All right, uh, so at this time we will uh, open, um, open, open forum. <laughs> uh, so if anyone uh, still with us this evening would like to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, seeing no one, we will close open forum and open agenda item number eight, which is new business. And I'll turn it over to Director Ricker. Great, I have one item of new business that is related, again, to the <clears throat> AMP up committee, and that is that um, I think originally, and I mentioned this in this, uh, and to this group before, originally I had thought that all 16 members of the AMP up advisory committee would be um, involved in interviewing the uh, respondents to the RFP. We ended up with so many responses to the RFP on the advice of town council and on our, um, on our purchasing agent. Um, we decided to do the selection committee. Um, the selection committee is made up of four members um, of the AMP up committee, the two ARB representatives, and then myself representing town staff. Um, so we'll have, it was important to the AMP up committee that they have four members who weren't necessarily on the ARB um, on the selection committee to the two, uh, two ARB members and the, and, the, and the town staff so that there would always be um, one more AMP up committee member than um, ARB and town staff together. So that is, uh, uh, we are in the process of finalizing um, our, select, our, our, uh, our evaluation criteria, using our evaluation criteria to narrow this down to about three consultants which we're planning on doing interviews as quickly as we can following um, uh, sort of coordination of, of uh, the, the evaluations that are being done by this selection committee. Great, thank you. Any questions, comments on that process? Um, you, uh, I believe, also have um, an upcoming workshop uh, oh. with the public oh, for the Arlington I'm Heights. I'm so sorry, how could I forget? We have next week on the district? 29th, the Arlington Heights Business District, we're holding a public meeting at the Pierce School at 6.30 p.m. Um, we will be going over uh, the, um, uh, the the proposal uh, by MIPC from those uh, many years ago, but I believe what, what is happening, what will be happening, excuse me, is an evaluation of the zoning that has um, been uh, uh, approved since then uh, to see what is still relevant as, as part of that and have a conversation, I think, of, you know, does, does uh, MAPC's recommendations still uh, uh, apply? You know, are there other things that people would like to see um, in an Arlington Heights business district zone? Thank you, Rachel. Great. Hey, no, that's fine. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and I think that the other item that we wanted to discuss was um, looking to set a date for a uh, board retreat, which we have done typically in um, early December, late November, early December in the in the fall in the past. But I think we're pushing a little bit into the fall, um, specifically around um, the. Uh, Articles that we may want to target for uh, town meeting in the in the spring of 2025 as well. Um, so perhaps if um, what we might do is circulate um, a potential uh, Saturday or Sunday date in. Um, maybe mid-November into the first two weekends in December. Can I make a suggestion? Please. Can we do a brunch where we meet maybe at a restaurant and uh, partake of uh, some food and talk? Or do you want to keep officially in a conference room? Um, I mean, we've typically needed to project. And, you know, it's been, we, we've had a lot, especially I think if we're going to, going to be speaking about some of the topics, such as the um, boundaries of things like the um, public, uh, excuse me, parking benefits district and some of the other follow-up items we had from the select board, I think it might be a good idea for us to have a room where we can project. That's my opinion of others. So it's a public meeting. I don't know how we could have a public meeting in a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. We did it one time. We did? Not no, no. In, in any way, I think we need to project. <laughs> okay. How about December 14, which is a Saturday? We've done this on a Saturday in the past. We don't have to. Um, we can pick an evening. Um, Saturday mornings have been, uh, I thought, pretty useful and everybody was able to come. Yep. I didn't hear what day. December 14th. 14th. It's a Saturday. 
that works. That for looks me. like it works for me. Let's ink it. You're kidding me. <laughs> Somebody should tell Shana. Let's make sure, yes, thank you, Jean. Let's make sure that works for Shana. Yes. Do we have a backup date in case that date does not work? Would December 7th work? Yep. Or the 15th? I cannot do um, the 15th, I don't believe. I prefer to, yeah. So December 7th or 15th. Yeah. Well, 14th. Well, 14th is our preferred. I'm just looking at backup dates. The backup dates is 7th. Okay. Okay. So who's going to contact Shana and then let us know which date yeah. it is? Well, Claire, you'll reach out to, reach out to yeah. Shana? Okay. And let us know. Great. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, any other new business, Steve? Well, yeah. I was. I wanted to looking at this, reviewing this app, like um, the second docket on or the last docket on our agenda made me sort of realize that, or it, it makes it real pretty apparent that the B1 district does have some shortcomings. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, one of them. I, I think when we increase the. You know, did the FAR increases we applied that those were applied for, from B2 to B5? Um, uh, I, I think that it would be worth considering making well, two dimensional changes to the B districts. One would be to allow an FAR of 1.5, and the other would be to, I, I think, adjust the setback requirements. So, right now, there's a 20 foot front back front setback requirement. We do have the, the, the ability to adjust that, but you know what, what the sort of dimensional regulations are saying is, you know, you shall not do street activation here. Um, and I don't think that's the message we want to send. So, Agreed. Yeah, yep. that's it. Okay. Well, instead of changing C1, I thought we'll also look at maybe just deleting it. Because B1 only happens uh, uh, on the that's everywhere, right? There's, there's no other B1 anywhere else. Right. And so why have it? There's, I mean, that is, you know, switch redistricting would be another option. Um, we could wait and see where the Arlington Heights rezoning yes, goes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there, were, there are, I yes. think, other B1s there are outside other ones. of yeah. the Arlington yeah. Heights Business District. Yeah, I, I know, uh, like, There might be a temporary there. message. I mean, there, there may be a more holistic B district um, conversation that perhaps is not for this year, but, to, you know, at least in the time being, we could yeah. affect some positive change in the B1. Yeah. I, I think for, just for the sake of allowing more Allow it, making it easier to build mixed use on Mass Ave. Right. There would be benefit in doing that. I mean, to actually have a neighborhood business district, I, I think that should be allowed in neighborhoods. Um, you know, we have the concept of a 15-minute city. I, you know, we're not close to that, but I'd like to get. I, I think it would be a step forward if we could get to the point where everyone had a business within a 15-minute walk of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a, it's another whole, it's a whole other conversation. I have that on my potential articles list, along with uh, homes that about the bike path <laughs> being under ARB jurisdiction. Yes. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, Gene? Nothing. Ken, any other new business? No. Okay. Uh, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Gene? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.